Raring to in Tennessee, call or text the Tennessee Nine. Redmark 1 800 889 In Connecticut, call 888 Check, check, yes. check, check. E.org slash chat. New York, call 877 check. check 1212. Open line 467. Can you guys hear me down there? It's enough now. Two. You've been struggling with ED. Well, I've got One. great news. So there check. Can you guys hear me down there? That does not require pills, injections, or what happened there, guys? Medical break. Side Medical Clinic provides the most advanced form of a It was more than 10 seconds. It's designed to improve blood flow and reverse ED and restore natural performance in the bed. This form of treatment has been studied extensively and proven to be extreme.
Sundays seem so far away. It's, it's like that normally during the regular season, and you guys know. Uh, but wait until Sunday, and, and as you got closer to the game, it was that Friday night was long, the Saturday all day long, sitting in a hotel, and then the game starting later. It, was, it just became a long, long week to get to the game. So that was the challenging part, just kind of trying to make it as normal as possible. And what would a normal week have been for you guys when you played? Uh, nothing, nothing comparable to the Super Bowl. I never got close to the Super Bowl, so I, I feel insignificant giving that that account. I, I don't know. <laughs> no, I don't know that no, I want to tell no, you what oh. my week was right after Rodney said waiting leading up to the Super Bowl. I mean, no, we have to give you your daily affirmation. You are not insignificant. Okay, thank you. You're a handsome thank man. Thank you. Okay, fine. Thank you. I do smile very big. You yeah, know? you do. I brush my teeth to make sure that I can smile at people um, and I'm not missing anything going on up there. Uh, you, you know, you know a, a regular week uh, for me was was really Monday. Monday was a get yourself going. It, whatever it is you need to do, nicks, bumps and bruises, get a get a light workout in. And and I wanted to get acclimated with what who our opponent was and and just really, really watch. You know, I watch TV, TV versions of it. Just watch the team. Tuesday, you had Tuesday off, but it was still a rehab day. So I still made sure I went in and, and rehab. And then Wednesday, you hit the ground running. That's a full contact day. Bloody Wednesday. You get out there, you get full. And, and, and I don't know if that's how it is. I, I hear it's not like that anymore at all. I, I hear it's flag football <laughs> all week. And, and that carries over into Sundays. But um but Wednesdays were were pretty pretty uh, grueling early on in the year. As you get further into it, they you you get your work in and then you get your pads off. Thursday was pretty much almost kind of the same thing, but you go with tops. Then Fridays you either have shells or it'd be a baseball cap. Saturdays walk through baseball cap. So no no long waits, no 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 uh, nerves and no wondering and worrying about tickets for aunts and uncles because. You know, games were just the games at that point. And so the closest thing that to, to have an excitement for, for a big-time game outside of regular season was going to the Pro Bowl. I say that. But that, that's, there's nowhere near the amount of uh, intensity of what, what's at stake um, in a Pro Bowl game, as we all know. Right. Yeah. Right. I mean, for me, it's very similar to what LeVar is talking about. Monday, I, I didn't have to worry about, not often, uh, the bumps and bruises. Unless you had a big game or you just took some unnecessary hits as a receiver, you'd come in, you'd get treatment. Um, every Monday, every team, you lift weights, you go run, and you watch the film from the previous day, the game that you just played. So you'll split up. If you had a good game, you'll just go with your coordinator. If you got your ass kicked, excuse my language, if you got your butt <laughs> kicked, um, you'd probably watch it with the entire offense, and they want to point out the mistakes and things of that nature. Uh, Tuesday. I would come in, I'd work out, you watch some film, you go do community work in the city that you're playing at. The way practice is now for these guys, Wednesday for us used to be the hardest day of the week. It's yeah. not for me. It's for the linemen, the, the, the front seven. Mm -hmm. um, Thursday is another hard day because it's short yardage and goal line. Friday is the red zone area. That's where it's just helmets. The linemen now, they kind of get – tailor and pull back for us it's a lot of running but it's just red zone so it's not a lot you do a lot of two minute on friday and then what he says saturday is a walkthrough i believe they went through the same thing this week because you want to keep it as close to what a regular week is you don't want to change every player knows growing up this is a super bowl the call is just a regular game it's it's not a regular game but they're going to say that i mean my advice to the players would be Approach it as such. Don't sit in your hotel room all day because yeah. you you wouldn't you're do that. that, that no, you're gonna have that nervous energy. Yeah. Go out to eat each night. Go out here when you get out here and have your fun. Hire security because there's just people that want to troll you. Just hire security because that thousand dollars you pay for security is gonna save you a lot of money Jeez. if you have to hire an attorney. Mm -hmm. And so, but go out each night, enjoy it because you may not get back. I made the playoffs my fourth year. We were all young. I'm like, we're going to be here every year. Yeah. I didn't get back for about six years after that. <laughs> and, and so you have to enjoy it because they all think we'll be back next year. I'm young. There's no guarantees. And that's what makes the National Football League the best sport in the world because there are no guarantees. The Bengals are just the number, picking uh, number one. 
two years ago. They were two right. and fourteen, and here they are in the Super Bowl. Pretty much the laughing stock of the National Football League, really. One and of them. here they are in that in, in the Super Bowl, and so have fun, enjoy it because he never got to one. No, nope. I never got. I got closer than he got, but I wasn't close. How close you get? We lost in the divisional round. Yeah. I lost but you in the divisional got there. I lost in the divisional I mean, round. Because Carson got hurt. Hold oh, on now. Carson, I, lost, I Carson, lost in the divisional round. We Carson, made it out of the wild card. If and Carson lost. doesn't get hurt, but, yeah. Yeah, we, uh, we probably win a Super Bowl, but we don't yeah. know. Right. If they would have played me on third downs, we would have beat Seattle. <laughs> Seattle. <laughs> and we would have got out of the divisional <laughs> round. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's uh, that's the truth. That is the truth. Don't laugh that off. That, you, we were in the game against Seattle in Seattle in 2006, 2005, 2005, right? Because 2006 was my last year. Oh, wow. I did that game. You were in that game? I was working that game for NFL Network. Right. I was there. I, yeah. Right. Washington and Seattle. Yes, I was there. I knocked Sean Alexander into... Uh, the Twilight Zone. Th- it was the Twilight Zone. <laughs> I told him, "Come on, come on and get him. Come on and get this young man because uh, his day is done." I was out there. I was out there taking. Hey, wait, titles. wait, wait, wait. Hold on. So, so when you hit him, yeah, I knew it was. You done. knew right away. I was coming into the game to doing. <laughs> I came into the game to do him. And that's See, all exactly that doing what is I why did. he acts like this now. <laughs> that's that's a, that is exactly what I did. And and I set the stage. Do you know who ran on us to win this game over my side when they were taking me off the field because I had the whole contract issue going on and they were creating a narrative that I don't know the defenses and all this stuff, whatever. Mac Strong was running over my side like there was no one there. And that's the reason why they was able to win the game. It was a close game. We could have won the game. No, they were running on third down. They didn't want to win. And that was the year Seattle ended up losing to Pittsburgh. That's correct. In the Super Bowl. That's correct. That's correct. Yeah. I think we could have went. Because that's the year we went into Tampa Bay in that wild card, that wild card round and beat them in Tampa Bay with Mike Allstott and all mm-hmm. those guys. Um, but yeah, I mean, so I did make it to the divisional round. I mean, we my I wasn't the guy, man, but I played in Baltimore. We're up 21 points at halftime against the Steelers, and we lose. It's a game that I dropped the ball on fourth down, but we're up 21 points. Should have won that game. And the we should have would have are the worst but, losses. Like, I'd the, rather just get the, my ass kicked. I don't, have, I don't want to have a yeah. should have would have game. You know, a what loss I mean? is a right. loss. I mean, the, the Rams have such a huge advantage because they're from here, they don't have to get on the airplane. Cincinnati, they're coming from Ohio. It's snowing, it's cold, and it just so happened that it's going to be a great week this week. So as soon as they get off the plane, they're going to be like, oh, my Let's go to God. the beach. It's 80 degrees every day this week. Right. Yeah. And the guys that aren't from here, that haven't been here, they can get themselves into trouble. Is there are prettier people here too than in Cincinnati? <laughs> I mean, let's just let's just keep it real. I'm not. There's prettier people it's here a, than in Cincinnati. I came from the East Coast. It's One pretty. of the things I immediately recognized upon moving here was, man, I've been cheated in my life. Because there are some ugly people right, from where I grew up. <laughs> Anybody here from the Midwest? It's pretty people everywhere, I believe. There's I mean, some, some. It's just more there's people some, here. There's just more prettier here. Uh, that's, they get more vitamin but C they, here. Or something. I don't know. <laughs> They're going to enjoy that fact of it. But you're here to play football, bottom yeah. line. You're here to play football. And you got to understand what's important. Why are you here? I'm not here for women. I'm not here to enjoy California. I'm here for the Los Angeles Rams to play in the Super Bowl. And that's it. That's true. That's I, hear it. This, I hear this from, from a lot of people uh, that, that talk about, you know, Joe Burrow. And, and he's a young quarterback coming into this game and everything. And like you said, two years ago, they got him because he, they got the number one pick in the draft. They two four, which is, by the way, the great thing about the NFL is that you can be two and fourteen and come back two years later and be in the and be in the Super Bowl. Um, but I was telling someone this is that once all this other stuff we're talking about, because we're gonna, it's gonna be a lot of attention to what these guys are doing. Oh, we saw somebody out at dinner. Oh, they're having this party. They showed up to this media thing. Once they get to Sunday, and and you guys know this because you just talked about different games, big games, things like that. Once the ball is kicked off, 
it goes back to being just playing football, mm -hmm. right? It's not like, oh, I'm in the Super Bowl. Oh, no, I can't do this. It is about playing football. The lights, yeah, they're brighter on the outside, but that's the, the anticipation of just getting the game started. Um, these guys will just go back to do what they normally do on Sunday. Get there early yeah, so that you can walk the field and, man, this is a Super Bowl, and you get through that moment early. I know for me in every game, I was nervous before every game. As so soon as I hit play. somebody or first somebody play. hit me, yeah, yeah first play. I was good. Yeah. Indeed. It's just that nervous <laughs> so energy. Because every game, every game, it'd be like they do the coin toss. I'd be like, please, please, defense, don't go first. <laughs> please, defense, don't go first. <laughs> then they, they call the defense. Defense up. I'd be like, oh, ass, they got to go first. And i go out on the field. I'd be like, God dang, look at how big they are. Then i get that first hit, and I was like, I'm in your ass all day. <laughs> it's, it's my game all day. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But, but you'd be nervous okay. up until that yeah. first how, play. How is it as a quarterback? Though? It's yeah. surely not that, huh? No, you know, it's, 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 it's the same thing. No, you you have those moments like man, this is a big, this is one and done or whatever. You know, this is a big moment. But to your point, yes, get there early, get it all out early, get a sweat in early, do all those things. Um, but I was the same way. I, I would I I wanted the defense to get the ball first. <laughs> I wanted the defense to get the ball first, so right. the flow of the game could kind of get right, going a little right, bit, right. and then you can kind of see what happens. And then you know after that first snap. Everything goes back to your preparation and just mm -hmm. goes back to, okay, this is what we worked on. I'm just going to take the snap and go play football. Mm -hmm. But it's all that leading up to it is just, man, your butterflies, all those things. It's the Super Bowl. You're seeing people that on the sidelines and warm-ups, you, you know, is everybody all kind of stars all up the line, the sidelines. Like, man, yeah. this, is, this is it. This is big. But the game starts its own. This week's going to be a little different for the Super Bowl teams. Normally, Rodney, when you were in the Super Bowl, you come in on Monday. You have the big media day, and you're yeah. in the city, and you're in the hotel, and you, you wait. This year, the teams aren't coming in today. Mm -hmm. I mean, the Bengals won't be in, I think, Thursday. No, no they, they get in, in tomorrow. Tomorrow? Tomorrow? Yeah, tomorrow. They're coming the, in tomorrow? The Bengals get in. They, yeah, get in tomorrow. they get in tomorrow evening. Tomorrow. All right. So then, really, Wednesday's their first day. You got to yeah. do the media stuff early in the week. So Tuesday, tomorrow. But how is the media? Is media different? is going to be different. Yeah, because COVID Friday is the only availability you'll see yeah. people in person. Otherwise, mm -hmm. it's all going to be virtual. That stuff. actually yeah. will be a good thing. Right. I think so. Yeah. Less distraction. But they have to be in town. Yeah, but I'm, I'm surprised that they're actually letting the media see them in person on Friday. I, I, I am well, surprised. I, I thought they would do it all I'll virtually. I'll tell you, if I'm the team, I would want to do it. I would not want to risk anyone having to be in protocols or anything. Oh, they're not taking did. tests anyway. I don't care. I don't care. I don't want nobody feeling sick. I don't want nobody. Coach, I don't. You no, feel sick. I don't you want nobody. If you're not you around, feel exactly. sick. You no. playing? Like exactly. I'm not saying I want a you word. At your I'm best. not saying nothing. Yeah. I, if I, I feel sick, I want you at your best. <laughs> what if you cramping up in the first quarter? At least I'm going to get out there. I'm the going to go get IV. I go yeah. get IV. I, I don't want nobody. This is now. I'm a coach now. Everyone, I coach now. As a coach, I don't want it. I don't want yeah. it. I don't want them around. So you would take advantage of this opportunity. Absolutely. We're doing everything virtual. In fact, in fact. When we get here, I would I would have got here I would have got here last week, <laughs> and we would have been living somewhere somewhere out from L.A. Maybe we go to Oxnard or something like that, right? We use the facilities there and we conduct practice so they can get acclimated to the time change, to the air, everything that's going on, anything that could play a part. Because you are playing a home team. Think about yeah. that now. This is not your you're converging, you're converging on everybody's meeting up in LA to do this. This is their home turf. I would be here, I'd have them practicing. We might do some drills. We might we might do some plays, 2 minute drills, situational drills on sand. Cuz I just want them to have the idea, the mindset of we are here on their turf and I don't care what the turf and the surface is, we're going to deliver. I would already have them here. We come in. We might come into the hotel, the team hotel, on Wednesday. I'm not doing on Wednesday. that. I, yeah. I wouldn't do that. You want to yeah. keep it as normal as possible. And I'm coming. When you, you do that, <laughs> coming in. You, you're showing your players <laughs> that you're different. slightly nervous. Like, no, we, we've no, never done nervous. this before. Like, the media thing on a Friday. To me, I think the media part of it is a great thing for the players. It's a great thing for the league. Because you get to see people's personality. Cincinnati, they're, they're not a national team. The Rams are a national team. L.A. is a big market. So we're familiar with Stafford and Cooper Cup and Aaron Donald, Von Miller, OB. We're familiar with these guys. Mm -hmm. 
You're not really <laughs> familiar with the Bengals. We know who Joe Burrow is. We know who Jamar Chase is. But people aren't familiar with them in their personality. So for me, the media day is good. It's good for the NFL. It's good for the players. I like that take. And, and I'm so, still treating it like a bowl game. You get here I'm treating sooner. It like a bowl game. I, get, they get here tomorrow. Yeah. It's more than enough time. They don't have all the media obligations in years past. Right. So it is a better thing, but that can be a bad thing because now you have more free time. And that's why I say go out to eat. Go do this. Just hire security. We cheat, man. You don't want to spend this thousand dollars. You end up spending six thousand for an attorney. You're like, oh my that's god. That's why I'm gonna yeah. push back on them and say, let's get here early. Get it but, out your system. Like it's like a bowl game. Like treat this. Get, get, it's get the Super Bowl of being here. So get, get, get get here last week. Get, right. Go it's out, out your system. Out your, it's out your no. system. Get here last. It's just too much time. You get here last week. TJ might not know what it's like to be at a time. major bowl game. So I don't I don't <laughs> expect him to understand what I'm saying. And you know he <laughs> said, but we've gone over this before. He says is he was a college athlete for three years at Penn State. I was in Oregon State for two years, and I played in a bigger bowl game than he did. Ooh. And we, <laughs> hey, and we won. What bowl game? The Fiesta Bowl, and we won. And we won. I didn't play in the Fiesta Bowl. You guys weren't good enough. They you guys weren't good Bowl. enough. Hold on now. I played in the New Year's Day Bowl. Which bowl game? The Outback Bowl. The, exactly. The Outback Bowl. <laughs> That's my point. See how that changes. What about what this about so uh you see? What about what about curfew? Because a lot of coaches sometimes they get to this game and they want to change up curfew for guys. You know your team, Rodney. Yeah. So they want to start it on Tuesday or Wednesday instead of doing it like it normally is on a Saturday night. What this is what I would do. I'm not giving them a curfew. I'm going to let the players dictate what time the uh, we should be in. So they're going to have a players meeting and say, listen, we all in the room by midnight, every night, everybody on this team, do we all agree? Whoever going to break curfew going to break they're curfew. Gonna break anyway. Anyway. Yeah. Like, gonna the they're going to break it anyway. Whoever going to be the ones that break it, they're going to be the breakers. Rodney, and we grown men, bro. We had right. guys sneaking down the emergency exit, bro. I'm like, are you serious? You can't wait till tomorrow? Yeah. Like, it was yeah. unreal. Yeah. So if they want to get out, they get they out. Get, they out. get out. So yeah. you get the coaches out of it, and you let the players have a meeting and say, what time we in the room? Midnight, everybody. Bet. This and is this is COVID, That's though. how you do it. This right. is COVID. You got different protocols. I'm tightening it down. I'm, I'm buttoning it up. See, that's why, I know. I, they, gonna, take that's the why they rebel against LeVar. <laughs> I'm going to take the tendencies. I'm going to take the tendencies of years past of how guys have escaped. Who got kids in here? You'd be like, you can't go anywhere. Out. They sneaking I'm out. I'm yeah. just sad. You know, I'm going to try to, I'm going to try to, uh, you know, manage this the best that I can. See, I'm today's Not, coach. LeVar is uh, our coaches when we play. 19, I, I'm, 19, but, hold on, but I'm a player, but I'm a player's coach. I'm protecting you from yourself. Oh, That's all I'm saying. Oh. You're being a friend. I am. That's why I'm going to bring you here. And that first week we get here, we don't need to have a curfew. I take you out like, how, what type of trouble are you going to get into in Oxnard, right? What are you going to get into? There's always an Uber. There's always, <laughs> there's always a chance, right? And as you but just if said, you're working that you hard. You just said it's pretty, so many pretty women. If you're working yeah. that hard and to get in trouble, young. then you didn't want it bad enough anyway. I'd rather find it out the week before we get to Super Bowl week. Let me send you home no, the week before Super Bowl week. Fred, ain't no more Bear Robbins. <laughs> those those days are I'm just saying, oh, you know, oh, you know those days like who, oh, hey, there's no more bear no, rock, no, no, no more TJ. No more. I, I want to know how some of the guys snuck out. That's what I want to know. Because it's uh, tell us some stories. It's security when you stay in a hotel. As soon as you get off the elevator, they got security right there, bow. Seat right there. Right there, right in front of as soon yeah. as you exit the elevator. So they can see this whole there hallway. There you go, Fred. So it's how I get out. There you go. It's how I get out. Yeah, that's the main security. that's the main deal right, right there. there. No, this is what they do. It's the main the deal. The guys that the coaches know may sneak out. They put their room right by the elevator yeah. so that when you open the door, they get up. Cause you put the, the room, that's the stairs. All right. And this my room. I'm gonna just walk out and I'm going down the I could be on the 19th floor. I'm hitting right. 18 levels of stairs. Boom, 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 boom. <laughs> no lie. They would do that all the time. Yeah. Just to go see somebody. You'd be like, God, bruh, it's not this. Right. And I, so, I'm not giving away no in secrets. This, in this situation, 
<laughs> that's not a secret. That's common sense. But I, hey, but if I ever end up coaching, I know what they you are. Know it all. And then you will. It's what Rodney <laughs> what said. You will literally pay the security. Be like, bro, yeah. I'm going to give you $500. So-and-so yeah. coming to see me. Just send her to my room. I'm in right. room. Boom, boom, boom. I'll give you one. I'll and they'll do one. that? I'll give y'all one. You never go up to the floor. You never go up to the floor. You never check into your room. You never check in. You just leave right after after two <laughs> mil. But see, you can look, look, here's a, here's a, you here, can do that with us. Here, here's the here's wait, a, but here's wait, how you wait, get away. Wait, here's you, how you get away with it. Wait, though. nobody checked the room. They do knocked. check the they do check the room. They open the door. Yeah, you good? Yeah, I'm good. So if you make sure you get a you get a twin room. So I got a roommate. So I got Pete. <laughs> All Pete got to do is say, we're good. Hey, we're good. We're good. Turn, we're the good. Good. turn the water hey, on. Fred. Turn the water on. No, you turn the water on. Hey. You taking the shower. In Cincinnati? <laughs> They're not coming in the room. Yeah. When I was playing, yeah. it, that wasn't happening. They check your room, like they come walk, in the room. Oh, yeah. I've been on TV. Bro, nah, nah, they go all in, in, look they at walk the door, in the room. Under the bed. Hey, how you looking doing? everywhere? Did they See, do that oh, in yes. the morning? I never oh, yeah. that. They walked in the room. Might have a conversation with you. Yeah. Me and Chad were roommates in well, college. That's why they checked. <laughs> that, that's the giveaway right there. We got to check on these They dudes. walked in there every home game, every away game. They didn't never open the door. Maybe the quarterbacks, they just mm. opened the door. But us, they walk in a room, have a conversation, walk out. Because people right. import, too. But we you, the, you don't have to always be an exporter. <laughs> you can be an importer, we're too. We're in a Super Bowl, Fred. <laughs> Just keep it real here. This is not going to happen. This yeah. is not going to – the Rams are from here. The big, yeah. This is not going to happen. This will be a moot point. They know the situation. It's a different era today. Yeah. Everything is instant. Nobody's yeah. sneaking out because they will be recorded. Cameras it's everywhere. It's too yeah. much going yeah. on. It's too important. It means too much. This will never hey, happen. Are we going to talk for three hours straight? Do we take breaks on this show? <laughs> our clock is our clock at twelve. I mean, we've gone thirteen minutes over what our, our break time That's was. That's your clock, we got, uh, right? What's, yeah. what's the you, you clock? Know what we what's do? our we clock? We got to pay some bills. Yeah. We, we like we, we like people to talk on our show. All We're right. not all about the commercials. All we right. we all want right. the audience yeah. to enjoy what you guys have. Okay. Okay. Yeah. See, exactly. hey, he asked that. You know why he asked that? He's right? exhausted. No, because no. hey, when no, we do I'm our fine. show, we do a show every Saturday. Yeah. We done had two breaks by now. We, huh? Yeah, we run out of time. <laughs> two yeah, like, hey, we got to be right it, back. It, if we're know? flowing, we're going to keep flowing. Okay. Yeah. Well, yeah. let's keep going. Yeah. I got more stories about this this hotel. No. <laughs> All right, <laughs> we're done <laughs> here. I wasn't sneaking out. So the bar was sneaking out. I was ready for the game. I was not sneaking out. I just knew how they were. Come on down to Hollywood Park if you're listening. We want you to be down here. We're giving away two tickets to Shaq's Fun House, Loving Spaces gift card, Super Bowl experience ticket, Smart and Final gift card, Lids Locker Room gift card, Celebrity Flag Football event at Pepperdine. We're giving away two four-packs. We are at the Hollywood Park Casino. We'll be down here until 3. Come on down on AM570 LA Sports. Your home of the Rams and Super Bowl 56. Now, All right, guys, you're clear. We're looking at five and a half minutes here. Just at Download the free iHeartRadio app and search AM570 LA Sports to listen to us wherever you go. Stay tuned. We'll be right back here on AM570 LA Sports.
Meet us at the 3rd Street Promenade for the largest free football event in the city, the Tailgate Tour, February 10th through 12th, featuring live broadcasts, NFC Champion LA Ram photo opportunities, the LA Charger Experience, plus free food and drinks. The Tailgate Tour is coming back to LA in your invite. Sponsored by Takis, Captain Morgan, Fox Sports Radio, AM 570 LA Sports, and KTLA Channel 5. EA Sports Madden NFL. Now we're playing sudden death. For the first time ever. That's what I'm talking about, baby. That's what I'm talking about. You can listen to the action of the Madden Championship Series live with the grand prize of the largest prize pool in MCS history. One million dollars. Featuring 14 of the world's best players. Let's go, we the best. We've witnessed a year-long journey. A season of triumph, heartbreak, and redemption. Tuesday, the EA Sports Madden Bowl Championship. Championship Series Finale, live from 4 to 6 p.m. We're trying to be champions this year, man. In the end, there will only be one. I'm the best in the world! The Madden Championship Series 22, live in HD on iHeartRadio. All shows are Pacific Standard Time. Power up with the Power Plus Mouth Guard. Power Plus is the next step in human evolution. By simply placing your jaw into the Power Plus position, you'll be able to achieve maximum strength, speed, and endurance, even mitigate concussion. Power Plus mouth guard in a 13-year study is showing lower concussion rates to 0.26%. For maximum performance and protection, get Power Plus today or order now. It will include a free carry case. Power up with Power Plus. Oh yeah, we're doing it on a Monday, Rodney Pete, Fred Rogan, our good friends, TJ Hushmanzada, LeVar Arrington, uh, Hollywood Park Casino. Thank you all for being here. Super Bowl week. Hey, before I forget, Fred, you know, you know, uh, LeVar and I toured, yes, did a we tour, did. tour in Iraq. Together. Yes, we did. One? Yeah. And we, we did we, one tour in Iraq yeah. together. Coach Bowden, yeah. rest his soul. Yeah. He was with us, one of the coaches. Yeah. We didn't fight. We we played flag football in a, in Iraq. I was going to say, what are yeah. you doing? It was a USO tour, but we it went was. to Iraq. Yeah, it was. Uh, it was very. It was nice. a lot of fun. What yeah, was that was like? Bobby Bowden was one of the coaches. Yeah. God rest his soul. Yeah. And um, Gene Stallings Gene was the other Stallings. was the other coach yeah. on the other side. So it was a bunch of us that went over on a USO tour. It was a uh, it was a lot Kirst, of fun. Yeah. Antonio Freeman. Yeah. Uh, 
Man, who is it? Andre uh, Reed. Andre Reed. Andre was Reed there. tore his Achilles tendon. Jim Kelly. Jim Kelly was the quarterback <laughs> on the other side. I, I was uh, the quarterback on one oh, side. Was a lot of fun. We yeah. pulled it out. Where'd y'all go? Last second, yeah. last second victory. Iraq. You know. Yeah, we we went to Kuwait first. Kuwait, and yeah, then yeah. Uh, went to Iraq. It was great. Yeah. It was a great experience. Was it? Slept in the barracks. Did all. Yeah, we you know, did. went on the Humvees and the tanks. And yeah. how long were you guys? How long were you guys there? About it a, was what? ten days. Yeah, about ten days. Oh. Yeah, it was. A it while. took a while to get there too. Really? Yeah, yeah. It was great though. I'll tell you what. That that when we were landing, and and the pallet, we had a woman pallet take us like oh yeah the, one a of drop? the exercises where you got to drop underneath the 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 missile radar or whatever was going right. on. She dropped us. Yeah, she dropped us. Get lo- it was, below the deck or something. What they call man, it? Whatever. It, yeah. it's one of those things where it, were you, you nervous? You achieve zero oh, gravity. So you're like yes. sitting in your you're you're in your seat, but you're you're it's only your buckle that's holding you down in your seat, unless you're holding yourself down. It's, it's pretty it's a pretty cool experience, man. Pretty cool experience. So and great dudes yeah. to do it with. I mean, you know, guys you grew up watching. You know, Rodney Pete. I look older than Rodney, but uh, Rodney <laughs> Rodney was in college when I was playing when little I was league. Up. You know what I mean? <laughs> he, he's aging well. I'm I'm all gray now, but. But, um, yeah, I mean, well, just see, to I'm be able clean. to hang I, out. If I let it go, it would be yeah. gray, all gray. It will be yeah. all gray like you. Man. I'm but older than Lamar. Good. Yeah, but not by much. <laughs> not by much, you know. <laughs> I feel like I'm older than all y'all by dog years because, you know, well, I'm you the did. one that had to do the dirty work yeah, on did. the field. Yeah, like, speaking of the you know. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday practices. Yeah, yeah. You would, yeah. You, you would be a Rodney little. was listening to uh, Anita Baker and Sade <laughs> before games. <laughs> TJ was, I don't know, TJ was listening to Troop and, and, and New the Edition. Troop. He said Troop. And what you listening to? I was to? listening to Master P. Uh, <laughs> body, body. Can't go get yourself a concussion. And go, knock exactly. your, go knock yourself uh, right on out. Oh, man. Get knocked hey, the hell hey, out. Hey, do you think, especially you, TJ, with the rules today, um, you probably still be playing. Man, oh, it's fun. I was man. just. I was just talking to Peter Work about that. We don't uh, talk often, and we're just talking how it's just different. I mean, yeah. but it, it was different for me as well than guys that came before myself. Right. And so the game is always going to be different mm-hmm. uh, to us older players than what the guys yeah. are playing now. It is what it is. It, it's a safer game. Um, it's an offensive game. Yeah. They want to see points. Nobody wants to watch a 10-7 game. You want to see 31 to 30. And I get that. We all have to adjust. Receivers, just from my perspective, receivers are coming into the NFL so much better than they ever been. Mm. Guys weren't coming into league this good you mean when from we a, were playing. A preparation standpoint, yeah, and they everything, just, knowing the game standpoint. They know so much more. You got more. guys like TJ Hushman's out of teaching you the details. You got right. guys like uh, Rodney Pete teaching you the details. That's the biggest that, those difference. Those things never existed when Social we were Social media. Younger. All the camps and all yeah. the, like, yeah. special coaching that you Special get. coaching, man. Like, I train guys for the combine. I've been doing it now, like, this is my fourth year. And at times, we'll get high-level high school kids that will come out. And so, they're working with the guys that I train in the NFL and the guys that are in college. And so, they get but knowledge you got that they otherwise would get. His son is yeah. working out with them. Yeah, yeah. You know my son mean? during COVID, my son seven years old during COVID. I'm like, oh, I need a carpool, buddy. You come to train every day. So he's training seven years old. He's training up, with go. future all pros <laughs> and high draft picks, specialized training. You're getting out at seven years old. So yeah. how are you going? You know, th- these kids are coming in so much more developed, well seasoned, understand, learn it on what route progressions are, how I read yeah. the, the coverages. All, this is all stuff, how I use my feet. Rodney, what yeah. sports you play growing up? You didn't just play yeah. football. No, baseball and basketball. And played so, it all through college. And, and mm-hmm. yeah. that's another thing. These kids now, and Fred, you know this because you do your little high school, all of yeah. the, the little. These kids just school, focus on yeah. one, one sport. sport. Yeah. yeah, Football season is like the kids of modern them. day. They in. They're big guys. Yeah. The season ends in December. They're playing 707 in January. Right, right. They don't go to track. They don't go to basketball. Mm-hmm. It's football year round. It makes them better football players, but they miss out on the athletic endeavors of baseball yeah. and track and field and bat. I don't know if it makes yeah. them healthier people, but it makes them better football players. Yes. Yes. You know, I, well, I don't know. Cause sometimes I think that by playing different sports, cause you, you play different yes, sports. Did. You did. So when I would go from basketball and then to baseball, 
what I did in basketball helped me in baseball. Absolutely. And then, and vice versa. Right. So, Absolutely. so it was beneficial, I thought, for me. But, but the, then at that point of getting burnt out mentally, too, being, being doing one thing, it's like, okay, I transitioned. Even when I got up to college, you know, football was such a grind, but baseball is such more of a laid back kind mm -hmm. of sport that I look forward to the spring because the practices and shagging balls and the whole atmosphere was different. It was like a relief to get away from it. Mm -hmm. Now you can't get away from it. Like you said, football seems over there in January. They're in seven, seven. I loved other sports. You know? I loved, I love, I was a basketball player first. So a lot of things yeah. I did on the football field, a pass yeah. rush move, right. Or even a, a receiver's move. Right. And, that's a crossover. Basketball right. I'm crossing and football, you over, you know? they're, they're parallel. It's all interchangeable yeah, stuff yeah, that's parallel. out there. You know, the way I set my feet, you know, it's like, oh, I would leapfrog dudes on the football field, right? Yeah. Go out there, set him up. I, I jump over him. It's like I was going dunk on you. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I knew how to land. I knew yeah. how to land because I was jumping off the ground in, in football and yeah. basketball. 100%. So, and then in track, you learn how to run. You don't really know that you don't know how to run until somebody teaches you how to run. <laughs> And that's honestly guy's yeah. true. Right? You may be fast, but you don't know how You're to run. You're fast, yeah. but, man, I used to run. Before I started running track, they taught me how to run. I was playing football, and this is how I was running. I'd be right. My head be back. Like, my head would be straight up, right? And I'm running, but I'm running with my head back. Then they taught me, all right, you got to pull your foot up to your butt, shoot it out, shoot it down, come back, keep turning it, keep your tuck your chin in, keep your eyes forward, right? If your eyes is up, you're going to slow down. If your eyes are on your where you're running to, you're going to get there faster. So you start to learn all these different details as to how you're supposed to approach what you're doing. And I don't think you always get that specified approach to what something is when you do just one sport. Right. Yeah. You get yeah. inundated with what it is that that position, that position, that position, this position, or this is how you move in those different movements. And I think that that there's a disservice done to these these kids that are are almost forced, in essence. To play one sport. No, I, I and Rodney knows. I mean, I coached AAU basketball. I was a basketball guy. My son is still playing in college at Chapman. They play tonight, by the way, at Whittier. Okay. Mm. They're 15 okay. and 2. Jack going to go for 30? That's He just texted me and said he is. Okay. He okay. said, I'm going for 30 tonight. Yeah, I love mm. it. But, you know, from he played soccer and basketball. When he got to about 11 years old, it was all basketball. No more baseball, no more soccer. That's all he wanted to play. And he's a pretty good athlete. And I, and I see kids today. And when they are just focused on one sport, the problem is, what if they don't make it? Mm -hmm. In other yeah. words, you guys are professional athletes. You've been gifted. You you have gifts that the majority of people walking around don't have. Former. Well, yeah, fine. Yeah. Former. Yeah, former, but still. <laughs> yeah. But still. Yeah. I mean, look at all of you today. Yeah. You're, you're pro athletes, for God's sakes. Well, a lot of people want to be a pro athlete. Mm -hmm. They don't have those gifts. Yeah. So it doesn't matter how much football or basketball you play. If you're four foot nine, you're not playing in the NBA. You know what I mean? And I think sometimes it hurts kids by just focusing on it one does. thing. That, that's a fact. That's yeah, I agree. All these sports are parallel. A lot of baseball players, they have great core strength because it's a rotational sport. Basketball players have really good lateral movement. Football players, the explosiveness that comes from that, the physicality that comes with playing football will transfer to basketball. Yeah. And so I have one son, three daughters. My son is going to play every sport. He has no choice. Right. And, and so he'll figure out what he likes and whatever he likes, then that's what we'll roll with. But we're not making that decision until you're old enough to understand mm -hmm. what you're good at. Because you but, may love one, yeah, but you, you may just, be better at another one. Right. Right. You never know. And you think about the quarterbacks that are out there. One thing, you know, from baseball, which I felt always, is that you see guys when they make crazy throws from different body positions. That's baseball. Right. The Russell Wilson and Patrick Mahomes and those Kyler guys, Murray. Kyler Murray, mm -hmm. all play baseball, you know, and that's, you know, throwing, you know, trying hey, isn't to. Isn't it crazy that Matthew Stafford was a better pitcher in high yeah. school than Kershaw? Yeah. It's crazy, right? Hmm. Matthew Stafford. How about that one damn punch? One, two punch in high school. They should have won every damn every tournament. Game. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, all right. Get the freedom you deserve with Alignment Health Plans ABA PPO plan. Visit alignmenthealthplan.com today. We're at the Hollywood Park Casino. Thank all of you for coming down. We've got the prizes we're going to give away. What are we, we going to give away, Fred? Oh, you want to know we're going to give away? Yes. yes. Two tickets to the Shaq's Funhouse. Wow. Living Spaces gift card. Come on, Living Spaces. Super Bowl Experience tickets. LA Convention Center. Uh, wow. Smart and Final gift card. Come on now. Liz Locker Room $50 gift card. Give me some Liz. 
<laughs> celebrity flag football event at Pepperdine two four hey, Is LeVar playing in that celebrity football game? No. Are you? Oh. LeVar. Oh. I, thought, no. I, thought, I thought he was. No. I thought he was. I, I hung up, literally hung up my spikes, my cleats after that USO. Oh, USO. So that's it. <laughs> I said it, former athletes. Hey, and I said it plural. So I said it for, but TJ, how sore were you after we played? I was that sore. Game? I was sore. I was looking at the dirt. Look, field. I'm looking at dudes like Javon. Javon's like, ah, what are we doing? Like, what? <laughs> what? Poor, poor Andre you Reed. See, towards mean, Achilles tendon. Yes, he did. <laughs> wow. He's about, about to pull like a whole, a whole bunch of CCs oh, off terrible. of my that's knee. That's a shame. Oh, man. Fluid was building up, all kinds of back was tight. <laughs> No, 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 went, no more games for the ball. All of us went straight to the infirmary. <laughs> more games. How, and how long ago was this? Years. Oh, man. Like yeah. 10 years? 10 years ago. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Years. Wow. That's a shame. It's been quite some time. Yeah. Well, it's a shame that you can still do one-legged forward squats down to the ground and come back up. Like, this guy right here, he'd be uh, on some, like, yeah. Mr. Miyagi type stuff. <laughs> <man>. <laughs> I was sitting there looking at this dude like, what is he doing? Like, <laughs> we went on we went on a family vacation, right? Our family, we're, we're hanging out and stuff like that, and I'm I'm hearing like all this grunting and stuff. I'm like, I'm I'm going over to to the uh, to the uh, fire pit, so I'm sitting at the fire pit, and I turn, I look. And he's working out with dudes in the back, <laughs> and he's leading the workout. Dudes was tapping out. <laughs> These is high school kids. High school kids is tapping out of the workout. I started. I found myself wiping sweat off my face. I started. That I started getting true. fatigued watching them work out. I said, I gotta stop. I gotta turn around. And stop watching y'all. No, no, no lie, too. I was like, Lavar, hop in the workout. He was like, No, no, no. no. My mama yeah. warned me about people like you no i am not working out with you not now not ever you are listening to am 570 la sports your home for the rams and super bowl 56 we'll continue and come on down to hollywood park casino and join us here we are all right guys you're clear we're looking at four and a half minutes on the brink of bringing another title to los angeles i got total trust and confidence in that defense man they've been unbelievable you will be right back here on am 570 la sports Lions never being in the game. Tails. Adele. Ready for a real cocktail? Introducing new Zing Zang ready to drink cocktails in a can. America's number one Bloody Mary mix with vodka. Zing Zang margaritas, tequila included. And whiskey sours with real Kentucky bourbon. Real cocktails, real ingredients, really good. New Zing Zang full strength canned cocktails. Legendary taste, legendary day. Always ready. Power up with the Power Plus mouth guard. Power Plus is the next step in human evolution. By simply placing your jaw into the Power Plus position, 
you'll be able to achieve maximum strength, speed, and endurance, even mitigate concussion. Power Plus Mouth Guard in a 13-year study is showing lower concussion rates to 0.26%. For maximum performance and protection, get Power Plus today or order now. It will include a free carry case. Power up with Power Plus. So we're excited to be here, excited to preview the Super Bowl experience, which is the interactive football festival for fans of all ages. In LA County, we're excited to welcome you this weekend. This is your weekend to come if you are an Angelina. T.J. Hushmanzada. Uh, come on down what here. What we got? Hollywood Park. Next break. Oh, next Top break. Top of the hour. Uh-oh. We're giving away the $500 Living Spaces gift card. Uh-oh. Who wants it? We got a ton of stuff to I'm give away. I'm taking bribes. <laughs> Me too. Not unusual. Oh, okay. All right. Also, we do hey, want to. Hey, hey, uh, hey, 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 hey. Well, you did go to USC. Hey. All right. Anyway. Um, that is very true. Hey, hey. That is very oh. true. Oh. We were doing. We were doing DJ NIL. Co-signed. We were doing NIL. Hey, bri hey bribes. <laughs> are, uh, they're legal now. Reggie Bush. <laughs> Reggie <laughs> Bush. Give him his Heisman hey, back. The bribes are legal you. now. Yes, That's right. They are. That's fine. Also want to shout out uh, one of our listeners, Laura, who is here today, Rodney. Laura. Shouts out to Laura. Laura uh, made. Oh, yeah. Little. Voodoo dolls. Not voodoo dolls. Oh, you <laughs> added it. Oh, goat. yeah. She look, has the twin look, at the house. Look at the goat teeth. You <laughs> don't got do on it here. wrong. Now, I show them tell you, Don't do it wrong. She oh, made little oh, uh, molds that's, of us. It's very nice. Nah, nah, sit, nah, and I showed play, Kevin mine. Laura, thank yeah, you, you again. It. There she is, way in the back. Uh, but Kevin, uh, uh, but Laura, Kevin thought <laughs> that Laura. I was actually Ned Coletti. Oh. Look like Ned Coletti. It kind of does. It kind of does. But we appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Laura. No, I don't. That's very nice. I was like, wait, who's Ned Coletti? Laura, do you have a replica of one of these at the house? Of course she does. 
Okay. So look, look, look. yep, oh. yep. <laughs> okay. <laughs> It's all good, Laura. We're good. <laughs> all right, guys. If you if you get any sharp pains in your sides or your back, <laughs> you know exactly where it's coming from. <laughs> oh, Laura! God <laughs> darn, Laura! All good energy, Laura. Oh, all, my back, Laura. All good energy. Like, where is this coming from? Oh, my big toe. Why is my... Oh, wait. Y'all don't have toes on this. <laughs> All right, let's uh, let's oh get let's, let's get to the game. Let's get to the game. Uh, yeah. There's a game. All right, yeah, there is a game. <laughs> okay. I want to start with this: is guys that played know the market very well. Is football back in Los Angeles now? Ha- has this city embraced the NFL and having teams? Here? <laughs> well, I mean, there were a whole lot of people. There were a whole lot of people at that last game that had uh, forty. 40- 49ers gear on i mean i i, I don't know I, I i mean is is football back they're in the super bowl as as a los angeles team so to say it's back i mean you had a successful year with the chargers you seemingly have two franchise quarterbacks in the market so I, I, you certainly could say that they they have football in los angeles but has the fan has it has it turned into a fan uh, driven? Is it is it a, a very heavy fan supported uh, industry in in California, Los Angeles? I think that's still a work in progress. If, if I'm being 100 percent honest, you got to say that's still a work in progress. I'm, the quick answer is yes. Just look at the stadium every Sunday when they play home games. Back. It's fi- I don't care if it's 40. It's filled up. It's sold out. California and Los Angeles, as long as they have a winning team, right? Football right. is back. Hmm. They can't be an average team because the fans will not show up. If they're right. winning <laughs> and they have good, recognizable players, Matthew Stafford, Cooper Cup, Odell Beckham, Aaron Donald, Von Miller, as long as you have that player that has a name to him and you're winning, it will always be great football here. You have to win, you have to give them a product that people want to come see. USC, they haven't been winning. I believe with Lincoln Riley, they will start winning. All of a sudden, the Coliseum will be packed again. You right. have to win. Give them something to want to come watch. They'll show up. Hmm. See, when the Rams came, and, and everybody knows all the uh, principles involved, you know they understood that to succeed in this market, you have to win to be relevant, and you have to go big. Kevin Demoff always says, go big or go home. And every year, they are doing things to get to a point where they can win. Sometimes it doesn't work. But they're not afraid to do anything necessary to win. When you guys played, and Rodney and I have talked about this when he played for the Lions. Oh, uh, yes, we did. Were you in a situation where your ownership would do anything every year to win? Oh, yeah. Uh, start, my, with, my, start with TJ yeah, first because he's say, Cincinnati. Did, yeah. yeah. The whole the, the narrative, because so, they're in the Super Bowl, and the narrative of Cincinnati has kind of been that place. So when you're playing, you think, yeah. You don't realize what the media is saying when you're actually in there and you're playing. Mm. When you retire, you start to realize it. And I, I wouldn't even say when I retired. It was probably like my fifth or sixth year. Like, Corey Dillon should still be with us. Takeo Spikes should mm. still be with us. Oh, that happened. Um, players that would want to come here as free agents because we were good offensively would not come because they wouldn't pay them. And so you you saw it like I thought like everyone else, like, God, like, let's do everything we can to win. We're like one or two pieces away <laughs> and they just wouldn't do it. And yeah. that's how they ran their business, because ultimately we as fans, because I'm a fan of the game. It's a business for them and we want our team to win. This is a business for them. And so the good and bad thing about the National Football League, you win, you're going to make money. You lose. You're still going to make money. Make more money. Only business in the world where you could be a bad business or a bad team and make money. Well, if you spend less, you actually make more. You make more. Right. So I would say no. I would say no. And and that's just being honest. And they're probably still that way. But things have changed. Like when I first got to Cincinnati and I've told the story a thousand times, we didn't have water or Gatorade in the locker room. We stayed at home for home games. We didn't stay in hotels. We stayed at home. So we'd be out Saturday night. And and so 
That has changed. We didn't have food. Marvin Lewis got there. We had food. We started getting water and Gatorade. We started staying in hotels. That's crazy. Um, yeah. They started giving us soap. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, like, like we had the the they had y'all. We like had to push the button. Wash <laughs> your hair and your body. Uh, and so it was we just, had soap. It was just <laughs> did they get y'all wash rags okay. too? Okay. Hey, no, uh, they, hey. they did not give us wash rags. So we cut. The dry off uh, cut them. Come on, man. We cut them to get a wash rag. Hey, True story. Was, I, used to say, I used to think Detroit was bad. Yeah, <laughs> and so, but things have changed. And I you got I give Katie Blackburn, and that's Troy Blackburn. That's uh Mike Brown's daughter and uh son-in-law. They've done a good job. Katie Blackburn, daughter Elizabeth. She's a college graduate. She was a little kid when I was playing. They brought her into the organization. She's mm-hmm. done a good job of changing things. Are they a finished product? Could they be better? Yes, but they've made so many strides that it's so much better than when I was there. And when I got there, it was bad. And when I left, it was better. And they're going to continue to get better. But Kevin Demoff, absolutely not. Are, are they at that level? Absolutely not. I don't think they'll ever get to that level. But they're in a the Super Bowl. Hmm. Yeah. There's, there's always the balance of it all, right? Because we were on the opposite end of the spectrum in Washington. Dan Snyder spoil the hell out of us we stayed in hotels my, my rookie year we stayed in hotels for a training camp training camp we're in hotels and, and i'm talking like a you know four-star hotel we had gatorade and in fact my rookie <laughs> year this is telling my age i guess a little bit but we had beer and our we didn't just have gatorades uh uh what's the what's the pedialytes um you had waters and you had beer. Like, so if you finish your day and you're sitting in the locker room, you crack your cold ones while you're sitting in the locker room. Now they, they've since done away with that, but we had everything like anything you could possibly want. If it was private chefs, if it was the best of, of trainers, if it was the best of this, we had everything that, that you could, could want or need. The problem was, is that mentality of of an arrogant, we have everything, you know, this, that, and the other. It was, it was that carried over into the culture of 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 the place that we were in. So it wasn't really we're spoiled, and the culture is you're getting all of this stuff, and we're performing for one another, and we're all in it together. It was like you're a favorite, you're a favorite. You're not a favorite. You're not a favorite. You're not a favorite. So you start to see what the hierarchy of, of players are. You start to see how that, that arrogance of how we move around. You talk about getting security. Nobody had more security than Dan Snyder moving around. We used to be like, why you got what you got security for? He got he yeah. got dudes walking oh, around. Yeah. They they loaded yeah. up on the hit. And it's like, what is, nobody's worried about you, but <laughs> But as you <laughs> as you got deeper into it, you start to realize that the the mentality it was his mentality, but he didn't treat people as like people. Yeah, you know, like if you weren't if you weren't a major player, if you weren't a big name player, like you had to call him Mister Snyder. Everybody had to call him Mister. Yeah. Say so he had grown ass people calling him Mister Snyder. Really, grown ass people. Some people they were told they were they were actually advised not to even look at him when he came into. When he came into the facility, you know, we would be out back practice and we're in the middle of practice and you hear <laughs> he, go, helicopter. He, he helicopter it over to practice and then lands in the practice during the pra- we are practicing. Y'all we're practicing. <laughs> go around a couple times. Yeah. Looking down on us. Lands. So you 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 started to feel more like man, this spoiledness is like we're part of the possessions. <laughs> you're part of the possessions. You yes. you're not like yeah. we ain't in this together. Yes. We part of the we part of this like yeah. in, in that way. You know what I mean? And, and then you start to look at it like paying paying going big paying money. He paid his players every year. He paid he paid bring them in. He paid. But it became a mercenary mentality. You aren't coming there to fit in like like how it is in New England, to fit into the Patriot way. You aren't coming in to fit into the Patriot way. You were coming to get your money. If something good happened, great. But if it didn't, 
I got my money. I'm going to go somewhere else and see if I can win there. Hey, the Bengals do have a chef now, though. They have a chef, (laughs) nice kitchen. It's it's much better. It it really is. But when you're in there, you know, because you spent a lot of time in Cincinnati, you think that that's the NFL. That's how it's done other places. And that's the way I felt in Detroit. I thought it was mm. normal. Yeah, I thought it was yeah. norm. I thought it was a norm. Mm. But I went from Detroit to the Dallas Cowboys mm. and found out mm. what how you do it in the NFL with hey, Jerry Jones. No That was lie. like man, I, when I went to New York. <laughs> when I left Giants. and I went to Seattle, man, no lie, man. I was calling guys on the team. I was FaceTime and a FaceTime had just kind of come out a little bit. And I was like, bruh, we got salmon crab legs steak, <laughs> like they got a chef and he's like they have a menu we can get whatever we want i'm sending up like you walk in and it was like a store of snacks i'm like yeah. bro look look at all this <laughs> bro look at all this and i'm like y'all ain't got none of this hey, hey we're, we're y'all ain't got none of this do hey, y'all we're in training camp right and i call carson I said, what y'all eating for dinner? I said, oh, I just ate crab legs. And he was pissed. And, and it was, but I will yeah. say this, like you get there and you appreciate it. But I'll be honest, I learned a lot of football in Cincinnati. The, the, we're in the National Football League because of football. Yeah, I can buy my own food. I can right. buy my Fair own enough. snacks. And the football aspect of it, to me, was better in Cincinnati than it was in Seattle. Ooh. And so I missed Ooh. that part of it yeah. because this is football. I right. learned a lot of football in Cincinnati. And so I'm like, okay, are you a good a football coach? Are these guys? And I didn't believe it was. Right. And I was pissed because I'm like, damn it. It's like you got a woman. Y'all fed up with each other. I'm getting a divorce. And then you go get another one. You're like, Damn. I'm dealing my, with the same stuff. Nah, she better. It was better. Right. The one I had was better, and you oh, thought it was no. bad. Oh, no. The grass wasn't it, greener. It now. wasn't oh, greener, no. but yeah. I thought it was. Oh, no. And you're like, ah. and I, No lie. I called one careful. of the coaches in Cincinnati, and I told him, I said, bro, I never gave you the credit that I think you deserve. Mm-hmm. I'm telling you, so much better of a coach than I thought you were. After me being here yeah. and being with you my whole career, you're a lot better than I thought you were, and I'm giving you your credit now. I'm sorry if I ever made you feel like I, I called him and told him this. Right. Because I didn't have a coach long. Everything outside of football was better in Seattle. But when it came to football, it was not. But Baltimore, yeah. top to bottom. Everything that I just named, football, food, Bashadi, everything. A one. Right. Baltimore. Baltimore. Oh. Mm, oh yeah. man. Ain't nothing like Baltimore. Nothing like it. Mm. There's not one team in the league better than Baltimore Ravens. Not one. Guarantee. Wow. And I haven't seen them all. I guarantee it. I guarantee it. Not one. I've wow. heard a lot of good things about Baltimore. Man, it's um, wow. but Shadi, the owner. Yeah. Man, you think he just a regular, hey, regular dude. dude. He come up and talk to you like he your homeboy. He could be sitting amongst y'all yeah. right now. You not even know it. That's nothing a, that is, that nothing is like the dude Baltimore. Is. Nothing like it, man. Yeah, nothing like great. it. Top to bottom. Hey, Super Week is here. Come on down. Join us at Hollywood Park Casino. And if you can't make it out here today, you can come back tomorrow with Petros and Money. They'll be joined by former USC NFL quarterback and NFL analyst Mark Sanchez. That'll start at 1. Join the party with the prizes, including a $500 Living Spaces gift card, which we are giving away in this break. Living Spaces. Tickets to the Super Bowl experience brought to you by Power Plus Mouth Guard. Power up your game with Power Plus. Details at powerplusmouthguard.com. We're live from Hollywood Park Casino. Two more hours. Come on down on AM570 LA Sports, your home of the Rams and Super Bowl 56. AM570. All right, you're clear. us at the Third Street Promenade for the largest free football event in the city, the Tailgate Tour, February 10th through 12th, featuring live broadcasts, NFC Champion LA Ram photo opportunities, the LA Charger Experience, plus free food and drinks. The Tailgate Tour is coming back to LA in your invite. Sponsored by Takis, Captain Morgan, Fox Sports Radio, AM570, LA Sports, and KTLA Channel 5. Super Week, Los Angeles. And you can be super and part of the action with us, the Petros and Money Show, live Tuesday, February 8th, starting early at Flex Alert at 1 o'clock to 4. That's right. We are your home of the NFL and Super Week Los Angeles rolls through us. 
Download the free iHeartRadio app and search AM570 LA Sports to listen to us wherever you go. To see, I like to see Aaron Donald, you know, win the Super Bowl. I think, I think from from a from a fan perspective, I really like, you know, everything that he did in the in the in the championship game. Um, but I guess you can never count out Joe Burrow. No, I mean the, the guy's a winner. He's won, he won at LSU. He's you know he was out last year and he was winning until he he was out and you know he's he's got something special with him. Um, he's got that Jock Peterson swag. He's he definitely got the swag. That's for sure. He's he, he, he's smoking the cigars like Jock, and uh, he just he's he's rocking a chain. It's, it's awesome. Power up with the Power Plus mouth guard. Power Plus is the next step in human evolution. By simply placing your jaw into the Power Plus position, you'll be able to achieve maximum strength, speed, and endurance, even mitigate concussion. Power Plus mouth guard in a 13-year study is showing lower concussion rates to 0.26 percent. For maximum performance and protection, get Power Plus today or order now. It will include a free carry case. Power up with Power Plus. Let's go! Sports Madden and NFL. Power play of sudden death. For the first time ever. That's what I'm talking about, baby. That's what I'm talking about. You can listen to the action of the Madden Championship Series live with the grand prize of the largest prize pool in MCS history. One million dollars. Featuring 14 of the world's best players. And it's gonna be the best. We've witnessed a year-long journey. A season of triumph, heartbreak, and redemption. Tuesday, the EA Sports Madden Bowl Championship Series finale. Live from 4 to 6 p.m. We're trying to be champions this year, man. In the end, there will only be one. I'm the best in the world! The Madden Championship Series 22, live in HD on iHeartRadio. All shows are Pacific Standard Time.
We're here till 3 o'clock today, and we've got a ton of stuff to give away. Still to give away two tickets to Shaq's Funhouse. That's what? worth a thousand bucks. What? Uh, Super Bowl experience tickets at the LA Convention Center. Smart Let's and Final gift card. Lids locker room gift card. Celebrity flag football event at Pepperdine. Let's hear it for the guys on stage. Pretty good yes. start today, huh? And it is Super Week, and all week we are bringing you Instagram Lives brought to you by the Genesis Invitational. Experience elevated at the Genesis Invitational as the PGA Tour stars return to the rib. Be there to experience the excitement on and off the course. Get your tickets today at genesisinvitational.com. Okay, TJ Labar, here we go. Rams and Bengals, let's start with the Rams. Uh, this year against good teams, they struggled during the regular season. Look a little better now here in the playoffs against good teams, no question about it. Uh, and they find themselves in the Super Bowl. As you look at the Rams, on paper, are they the better team? On paper, yeah. And I tell, I've been saying this, before the season started, before game one was ever played, I picked the Rams to go and win the Super Bowl. Yeah, and last year I picked the Bucks to go and win the Super Bowl too before the season, so I can possibly go two for two, two years in a row. He did. On, on paper, yeah, he was there, he know. On he paper, did. yeah, the, the Rams are better, but on paper the Chiefs are better than the Bengals too. On paper. And, and right. so it's strength on strength. Can the Bengals, they're not going to block them. Can they contain the front four? Because everybody points to Aaron Donald and Von Miller. Leonard Floyd can play. And so you got three guys that can really get after the quarterback. The Bengals' offensive line is not the best. That, that's no secret. But when you get sacked nine times and still win a game, enough credit is not being given to Cincinnati's defense. Mm -hmm. When's the last time anybody that's watched football – Seen Andy Reid get held to three points twice, twice, twice versus yeah. the same team in the, in the second, second half. half. Mm -hmm. And yeah. like the Bengals held them to three points in Cincinnati in the regular season, held them to three points in the second half last Sunday. We haven't seen that. And so you got to get a Bengals defense credit. They make adjustments and their adjustments are great adjustments because this high powered offense that the Kansas City Chiefs have, they made adjustments and give up three points in each game. I believe it will be a little different because the Rams, they will go a short passing game. They will go a media passing game. They'll also have a deep passing game. They attack all facets of the field. It's not going to be easy, but nobody's talking about the Bengals defense, which I believe deserves a ton of credit because without that defense, they don't beat Tennessee. They don't beat Kansas City. They might not even beat the Raiders. And so you got to give them credit. But my heart is with the Bengals, obviously. But I picked the Rams before the season started, and so I would like to see that happen. But I would also like to see the Bengals win. I hope we get a good game, but the Bengals' defense for sure is being overlooked. The Rams are better on paper. But when you think about this game coming into it, it's almost eerily similar to the first time the Patriots won the Super Bowl. There's, It's like that feeling in the air and if you think about it there's that one play that that led to them winning the super bowl that year you guys remember right they talked about the, the tuck the tuck, the tuck rule, rule yeah right? i was on the raiders in that game so never heard of that rule before in my life <laughs> <laughs> you you take one play you no take, one had heard of that rule before <laughs> you take one play that changes the course of the trajectory of a team that yeah. was that tackle that kept Kansas City out of the end zone at the end of the first half. Yeah. They go into the locker room. They make their adjustments. Don't kick the field. They goal. could not. They should have took the points. Yeah. They didn't take the points. They they He got cocky. They got yep. to, Icarus got too close to the sun. And and then you think about it, right? His 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 wings were made of wax. <laughs> he melted and he fell to the earth. That, that's the story. I mean, Man, but, anybody in here know what he's talking about? <laughs> he's cerebral. You know what he's talking about? And, 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 what he's talking and, about? Anyway, <laughs> the bottom line is that was a pivotal play and could end up being a pivotal moment in the franchise history of the Bengals. They go into this game. The confidence level. Like here, here's the better question, right? Here's the better question. On paper, who's better, the Bengals or the Rams? We'll say the Rams. But on paper, who's better, the, the, the Kansas City Chiefs or the L.A. Rams? Who's better on paper, right? I don't think anybody's going to not say Kansas City. 
I so would. you you going to go with the Rams? Yeah, I think I would too. Yeah, ooh, Rams I, got a better. Defense. I think I think if Kansas City beats Cincinnati, we're not. I, to me, I don't, I'm. This is this is one of those games where Kansas City has their way with the with the LA Rams. Really, I think so. That that was the hottest team in the National Football League going into that weekend of football. The, the Kansas City. Chiefs. I don't think I agree with that. Well, I'm, I'm gonna go with I'm gonna go out on my own on that one. <laughs> and, 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 and whether y'all disagree with me or not, I'm telling y'all, I'm overruling y'all on this one. The bottom line here is, are you going to take Patrick Mahomes or are you going to take St- the Stafford? I'm gonna take the Rams offense. Mm, see, I, I don't see that. I don't see it. And and the reason why I didn't see it is because of the way Kansas City did something this year that became very dangerous as 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 Kansas City, which was they learned to lean on their defense at times during the course of this year, which I believe made them a more complete team going into the playoffs. They won ugly games. They didn't just dominate teams this year. They had to win ugly, and they had to you know, consider their defense as a large part of why their, their season stayed alive during the course of this year. When you get into the playoffs and now your offense is now clicking – and your defense is playing, then then to me that be- that begins to be the they're 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 favored to win the Super Bowl next year already. They were favored to win the Super Bowl this year. And they not. They were and they favored. didn't, and they're not next year. But it was they were favored to win it. So and looking at it from that perspective, if I'm if I'm Cincinnati, I am coming in the Super Bowl week, and I am feeling confident that I've already slayed the Giants. The Rams aren't a giant to me. The Rams are a team. They got the best, the best one, maybe if maybe the best football player in the game. And Aaron Donald shots out the Pittsburgh's finest. Uh, they have one of the finest players in the game playing on their team, but they are susceptible, and we've seen that play out. If you go back to the Arizona game, the one thing that I found myself saying about the LA Rams after that first, the first Arizona Cardinal game was. They got manhandled. Well, they got manhandled more than once this year. They, they, they got, got punched right in the they mouth. They got manhandled by the 49ers. And by the, the Titans. Titans. By, they got manhandled by the Titans. No. This, yes, they, they lost did. to the Titans because of the interception. The Titans had under 200 yards of offense. But they physically, get manhandled. TJ, TJ, physically, they, were physically they, beat they, got, they got beat up. They got beat up. They got beat up. Eli beat up the Rams. Yeah. See, some, line, sometimes yeah. TJ's fan comes out. He's listen, a, he's all LA I'm Rams. saying he's is LA fan. if you get under sometimes 200 <laughs> fan, but I'm going to shoot you straight. Listen, <laughs> shoot you when straight. you have less than 200 yards of offense, you didn't manhandle anybody. I don't know. I, I, you didn't manhandle I anybody. Think, but think, in the specifics of the game, the Titans' defensive line dominated. They dominated yeah, them boys. The Rams. And they forced yes, mistakes. Yes, but I agree with you. The they forced, they forced mistakes with that dominant play. And I asked myself, can the Rams handle physical play? Now, they have answered that question in the playoffs. Yes. Yeah. They have answered that question. But this is an AFC North team. AFC North teams are historically known to be what? There's a physical teams. Mm -hmm. So to me, when I look at this, the Bengals already feel like they beat the best team that was available in this run. A lot of people said, oh, we saw the playoffs. We saw the championship game take place when Buffalo and Kansas City played. A lot of people said, you're not going to find a better game than this Buffalo-Kansas City game. Great game. Great game. Didn't I don't know that it outdid what Kansas City and and Cincinnati did. So in the end, you're talking about two perennial teams in Kansas City and Buffalo that met and 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 locked it up and everybody thought it was just a foregone conclusion that Kansas City was going to march into the, to the Super Bowl and play for this Super Not Bowl. Not me. Yeah. Except you. I picked the Bengals. Except you. You, you did didn't. Pick, you did pick. I, had the I certainly did not pick the Bengals. I had Buffalo on the uh on the Kansas City part of it. I think that they did what Sean McVay often gets criticized for, which is not running the football. They, they it, got it, away from they it. They got away from got running away the from football. Um, Cincinnati's dropping eight. You know, three man rush. You know why they did that? It and, was too easy in the first half. Too easy. It was too easy. Too easy. And instead of running the football against that, they they continued to try to throw. So they mm-hmm. kind of you know fell in a, into that trap. But how much do you guys think? Um, because both teams are look, both teams you don't get the Super Bowl by just by accident. By accident. Ooh. Both teams are good. Mm-hmm. How much 
do you think playing with the confidence that Cincinnati's playing with, the mojo that they're playing with, is going to be a factor? I think in this that's game? everything for them. That's and that's to me what I'm alluding to by them beating Kansas City and beating them the way that they did. Because you think about it, Kansas City, as y'all mentioned, they came out and they was just water through rocks. Yeah, they could not stop them. Whatever it is they wanted to do, they did it, and they did run the ball. When they handed the ball off, they were getting five, six yards a clip. That play at the end of the half yep. stopped the bleeding. They go into the locker room, and whatever happened in that locker room, they came out a different team in the second half the same exact way they did it four weeks before against them. I think four weeks it was. Yeah, last game of the season. Four weeks, yeah. right? Yeah. And did the same exact thing to them in the second half. Mahomes seemed distracted in the second Mahomes half to me. Mahomes seemed shook in that, the second half. Yeah. It didn't look like distracted. If, if, if we're going to call shook distracted, then he was shook. He was distracted. He just did not seem to, to – be like, how are they doing this? Right. I think they were caught off Again, guard. Goes back to TJ's point about underestimating Cincinnati's defense. You can't. That's nobody's talking. That's about. That's correct. Their defensive right. front, their defense yeah. in the kid out of Ohio State. That the, he, Sam he Hubbard, playing. Sam Hubbard and Trey Hendrickson. Yeah, they've been Trey playing Hendrickson some ball. Was a free agent signee from the Saints. Played great. Sam Hubbard. Together in the playoffs, they both have five and a half sacks. I believe twenty mm -hmm. quarterback pressures. The Bengals make good adjustments. It doesn't matter the score, right? Because they've done it. They've yeah. come from behind. Down twenty-one to three. Chiefs' first three possessions. Boom, boom, boom. Touchdown. Boom, boom, boom. Touchdown. Boom, boom, boom. Touchdown. Fourth possession. That's when Andy Reid got cocky. We've been yeah. going up and down the field instead of kicking the field goal. We got four, five seconds left. No timeouts. I'm going to call another play because it's been so easy. We're going to score another touchdown. Down 21-3. to three. They didn't fold. They didn't start pointing figures. They didn't say, why are you doing it? They stayed together, and they got a touchdown. Get another touchdown. Defense is stopping them. Yeah. So now once the defense is making these stops, the offense is like, okay, we got a chance now. And so – They've been behind. It doesn't matter the score. And you they're can do that against gonna, Kansas City. You can do that against gonna, anyone. They're not going to give up. And what people need to take into account, Zach Taylor used to coach with the Rams. Right. Mm -hmm. He knows this offense. He knows who this offense goes through. And that's number 10. This mm -hmm. offense is ran through Cooper Cup. You don't think Zach Taylor knows that? You don't think Zach Taylor knows Hey, Lou, I don't even know how to pronounce his last name. Anumura, whatever, the defensive coordinator for the Bengals. If we can limit Cooper Cup and force him to go to Odell, Odell can do it. Yeah. But coaches are creatures of habit. We want to get Cooper Cup the ball all the time. Take him away. Matthew Stafford, he wants to get Cooper that's, Cup the ball. To me, that's what is, I'm, I'm pinpointing. Is he going to yeah. force the ball to right. Cooper Cup because that offense runs through him? He's the first read, I guarantee, on 75% of the passing plays. Take that away. Hope the pressure can get to him. That's the key. And hope he can do what he did in Tennessee. Oh, I'm about to get sacked. Let me throw it all. It was a pick six touchdown. Pick, that's, see, and, to and me, so, that's the approach. Take Cooper Cup away. You take Jamar Chase away from the Bengals. Yeah. They'll go to T. Higgins. They'll go, go to Tyler Boyd. Boyd. Yeah. They'll go to Zuma. They'll go to Odell, but they want and prefer to go to Cooper. And Zach Taylor knows this. Should be interesting. I just want a good game. I feel like I'm a win regardless. I picked the Rams, and just to see the Bengals in this situation, um, it's good. It's, it, it's really good. But the Bengals are going to be here for a long time. Like, that entire yeah. team is young on rookie contracts. Right. They're going to be here but do for you see? do you see them – Continuing that or going back to what you nah. said earlier of like, we're not going to pay this guy. We're not going to keep this They all together. young. Joe, yeah. so Rodney, Joe trained out here with us for the combine. So I, I was, a, it was the year of COVID too, right when they shut everything down, man. I never forget, man. We was training. We was in the gym actually. Had just got off the field. It was just raining. So we went in the weight room and we was working out. And I was like, all right, I'll see you tomorrow. He was like, I don't know if I'll be here tomorrow. My agent is saying they're going to shut all flights down, so I'm probably flying out tonight. It's around a man three, four months straight, Monday through Friday. And it was him, Justin Herbert, 
Jordan Love, Sam Darnold, Josh Allen, they all out. Just the way he carried himself was just so like it was borderline cocky for real. Like who do yeah. he think he is? That's just how he carried himself. Knew he was going to be the first pick. And guys follow him. He's just a leader. Guys are in who's the leader. The leader is the guys is the guy that everybody else is willing to follow. I'm not yeah. a leader if y'all not following me. Right. I don't say I'm a leader. You guys showed that I'm the leader by right. be willing to follow me. That's Joe. No way, no chance that they go backwards. He's not going to let that happen. They're all young, by the way. Joe, young. Jamar Chase, a rookie. T. Higgins, young. Joe Mixon is young, even though yeah. he's on a second contract. Who they have to worry about paying? They got a lot of time. They get this offensive line better. That's it. That's get this offensive line better. All right, That's let's get into the quarterbacks when we come back. Tomorrow, starting at 4 for the first time ever, listen to the EA Sports Madden Bowl Finals live in HD. On the iHeartRadio app with the biggest prize pool in MCS history, $1 million. Download the free iHeartRadio app today. Search EA Sports Madden NFL. We'll continue live from Hollywood Park. We're here till 3. We invite you to come down, be a part of our wonderful crowd. Still have a lot of stuff to give away on AM570 LA Sports, home of the Rams, and Super Bowl 56. Now it's your All right, guys. You're- Download the free iHeartRadio app and search AM570 LA Sports to listen to us wherever you go. Stay tuned. We'll be right back here on AM570 LA Sports. at the Third Street Promenade for the largest free football event in the city, the Tailgate Tour, February 10th through 12th, featuring live broadcasts, NFC Champion LA Ram photo opportunities, the LA Charger Experience, plus free food and drinks. The Tailgate Tour is coming back to LA in your invite. Sponsored by Takis, Captain Morgan, Fox Sports Radio, AM570, LA Sports, and KTLA Channel 5. EA Sports Madden NFL. Our play of sudden death. For the first time ever. That's what I'm talking about, baby. That's what I'm talking about. You can listen to the action of the Madden Championship Series live with the grand prize of the largest prize pool in MCS history. One million dollars. Featuring 14 of the world's best players. And that's going to be the best. We've witnessed a year-long journey. A season of triumph, heartbreak, and redemption. Tuesday, the EA Sports Madden Bowl Championship. Championship Series Finale, live from 4 to 6 p.m. We're trying to be champions this year, man. In the end, there will only be one. I'm the best in the world! The Madden Championship Series 22, live in HD on iHeartRadio. All shows are Pacific Standard Time. Power up with... 
the Power Plus Mouth Guard. Power Plus is the next step in human evolution. By simply placing your jaw into the Power Plus position, you'll be able to achieve maximum strength, speed, and endurance, even mitigate concussion. Power Plus Mouth Guard in a 13-year study is showing lower concussion rates to 0.26%. For maximum performance and protection, get Power Plus today or order now. It will include a free carry case. Power up with Power Plus. They out. They are, and we've got stuff to give away. Well, we give We're here away. Till three. Oh, you want to hear it all? Yeah. We still got two tickets to Shaq's Fun House. Come They're on. worth a thousand dollars. Shaq's Fun House. We've got Super it's Bowl experience tickets at the LA Convention Center. Wow. Uh, we've got a Smart and Final gift card. Let's locker room fifty dollars gift card. Celebrity Fly Football event at Pepperdine. Two four packs. We give them away during the breaks. You want them? Got to come down here and get them. How Be do you with get us. all this stuff, guys? I, we need this for our show, TJ. I mean. We got to talk to to the, you know the the OGs. They get all this stuff. Uh, uh, <laughs> the, the, the only reason we've got stuff is because you're here today. Exactly. Exactly. Oh, yeah, right. oh. well, we, how that work? We don't oh, know. No. The we we got to figure yeah. this thing out. We usually give away a fleck of coleslaw. Exactly. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. KFC one fleck. All right. Come on down and enjoy it. Yeah. yeah right. We don't. We don't. All we don't right. get any goodies unless you unless know. you're here. Oh, y'all come. Oh, you know. and Lavar, I mean, you're doing a morning show. You guys do a weekend show together. Uh, you're always working. I don't think it'd be too much to add this show too. Mm. Just do this five days a week, plus your you show, I plus mean, your show. We, we I, might get giveaways. I feel like this is some great chemistry here, man. Uh, you know, I don't know. Feel it. Time slot is easy too. Yeah. Can't beat that. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a very nice time slot. It does, it does <laughs> feel it works. good. It works. It does feel good. All right, let's talk about the quarterbacks in this game. Matthew Stafford, when the Rams went out and got him and they, they gave away an awful lot to get him, they said, this is the guy that's going to get us over the hump here. Uh, is it fair to put that much pressure on him? Yes. yes. <laughs> yes. I, Matthew Stafford is the reason I thought the Rams would win a Super Bowl before the season started. I met Matthew Stafford, uh, I believe, when he was 20 years old. I went to a camp that uh, Nike had put on, and he was there. I was like, who is this? He was throwing the ball better than NFL guys. He wasn't in NFL. I was like, who is this dude throwing the ball like this? And met him, and he still remembers this story to this day. I was like, you're going to be the first pick of the draft. Mm -hmm. He was like, you got, you really think so? I'm like, yeah. He was at Georgia at the time? He w Yeah, he was at Georgia at the time. Uh -huh. And he got to the league, and he came up to me. He was like, i never forget you telling me that I was going to be the first pick. I couldn't believe that. And, and so when I saw that the rounds were and – I, and I said it, Matthew Stafford, arm talent. By far and away, one of the down. best quarterbacks yeah. in the game. He's Absolutely. that good. In, in Detroit, it, he just didn't have the culture needed. Right. He, he didn't have the stability needed. And I felt like coming here under McVay, the rounds would get to the Super Bowl. And I said it. And, and so if you're comparing the quarterbacks, 
two number one picks, two guys that played high-level football in college out of the SEC. Um, people will say Joe Burrow came into a similar situation in Cincinnati that Stafford came into in Detroit, and look what he's done. I can't argue that. Mm. But Stafford uh, is the reason before the season started. I had the Rams going to and winning the Super Bowl. I was just a big believer in his talent since he was a young kid and just didn't have the support system in Detroit. What, but, what, what do you say to that, though, TJ, when, when people – because the people have been saying that, you know, since these teams were matched up, that Joe Burrow came into a – Cincinnati, Detroit, very similar organizations, and Joe Burrow comes in and is able to get him to the Super Bowl in his second year and – that Matthew makes him Stafford more of a franchise quarterback. Matthew Stafford wasn't Matthew able to Stafford. do that in Detroit, wasn't able to win a playoff game in Detroit. Um, and, yes, culture has a lot to do with it. But given the fact that Cincinnati and Detroit were similar, what do you say to the, the people who say, well, I mean, it's Joe hard. Burrow did it. It's hard to argue with them. Yeah. It, it really is. You, you, you look at it and say, oh, Matthew Stafford did have Calvin Johnson. And we're not discrediting anybody that he's played with. Outside right. of Calvin Johnson, who else did he have? Right. Who else did he have? Like, we can't name a player. No. You can't name another receiver. Who else did he have? Yeah, didn't have a running game. Who else did he have? And so you're a quarterback. And, and he knows I say this a lot. Quarterbacks get way too much credit when things go well. Way too much. And they take way too much of the blame when things go bad. When they don't have an offensive line, oh, man, he needs yeah. a better offensive line. When they don't have the weapons, oh, he needs better skilled players around him. As soon as you give him all of that, oh, man, this quarterback is great. You forget about everything else that you complained that he didn't have. Football, yeah. this was the best game in the world. It's the ultimate team sport. You need 11 guys all pulling in the same direction. One guy pulling in the opposite direction to mess up the entire play. I can get wide open. The guard get beat, Rodney is sacked. Perfect protection. I don't get open. Rodney's getting sacked. And so everybody needs to be on the same page. But to answer your question, Joe Burrow has, he's come into the league with weapons yeah. that who can, who's had this as a rookie on paper? You got arguably the best rookie to ever play in the National Football League at receiver in Jamar Chase. T. Higgins should have been a first, first round pick. He was the first pick of the second round. Joe Mixon, a first round pick, should have been. But because he got in trouble at Oklahoma, yeah. he yeah. was a second round pick. A Tyler boy. Boyd has been good for years. He has the weapons more yeah. than Stafford had in Detroit. But if you were to argue me about that, I couldn't disagree with you because you're stating the fact. Yeah. The thing about Matthew Stafford, and we saw it earlier in the year, the concern about him was his consistency in turning the ball over. And and I've said all along, if he didn't turn the ball over, the Rams win. It's really that simple. You can say that about any quarterback. Okay, but the, well, all right, that's fair. That's <laughs> yep. fair, LeVar. Yep. But what we saw with the Rams this year is when he did make these mistakes, uh, the 49er game, a late toss down the, the sideline. Uh, they almost didn't get to the Super Bowl if the guy, the 49er defensive back, Picks catches that pop ball yeah. to center field. Mm -hmm. it, it, we're having a different conversation. Mm -hmm. Then he can turn around and throw 70 yards in the air in stride to Cooper Cup. Mm -hmm. uh, do you have any concerns about his consistency? Yes. I, I, I have concerns about his protecting protecting of the ball. Okay. Uh, and like I said to you just, just a few seconds ago, any quarterback can be rattled. Right, it, that's the worst. Not thing. Rodney Pete. That, well, oh. even Rodney, <laughs> even Rodney can Nobody, be rattled. No quarterback likes to get hit. Nobody. That's <laughs> that's the one thing. Yeah, if you if you could get to a quarterback and you can hear that, <laughs> if you could get that more than one time, you got a chance. And and that's what I that that to me is what's going to determine what takes place in this game. Can you get to the quarterback and touch him? Because sometimes that 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 feeling of I I know it's there, I I feel it's there. Like I, I can recall, I used to tell my teammates, I'd be like, "Hey, look, man, if you're not able to get the sack, do not give up on the play. Swipe swipe at him, yeah. like like swing at him. 
Because just knowing I feel the presence of, okay, it's there. And then you feel that hand, you know, fly by. It's whew, like, like I got to get, all right, I'm going to throw it now. If you can get, which we have seen that happen with Stafford. If you can rattle Stafford, and that to me, that is going to be the biggest piece of, of this game is what will they do defensively with the front seven to, to rattle Matthew Stafford. If you give him the opportunity to use that arm that led to him being the number one draft pick, it's going, they do not have the secondaries, the secondary to be able to deal with the Rams. They do not. So if it's all things given, they're giving Matthew Stafford time, they will outplay the Bengals in this game. Yeah. So you're going to have to get to Matthew Stafford. Now, to Joe, Joe Burrow, Joe Burrow restored in me the belief in you can actually draft and find what they call the franchise quarterback. That's what that did for me. Because when you look at what he's been able to do, and you mentioned Detroit – there are teams, and I've said this in, in previous shows, prior shows, there are teams that you look at and you say, they ain't going to the Super Bowl. They're not. I look at Detroit. I love Rodney. They ain't going to the Super Bowl. I love Matthew Stafford's game. They're not going to the Super Bowl, right? You look at, like, these certain teams, like Cleveland. Everybody's talking about, oh, how good Cleveland is. Cleveland, Cleveland, Cleveland. In my mind, they're not going to the Super Bowl. You're not going. I look at Cincinnati. If you can't go to the Super Bowl with Carson Palmer, Ocho Cinco, TJ Hushmanzada, some of these other guys, I was, <laughs> who was y'all's tight end? Who was y'all's tight end? We didn't throw to the tight end. But y'all had one. <laughs> was our, he was a blocker, Reggie Kelly. Reggie yeah. Kelly. I didn't know who I was thinking about. I was thinking about somebody else. There was, there was another receiver, receiver Chris that was big. Well, was Chris, Chris Henry. Henry. Yeah, Chris yeah. Henry. But there was another one that – was it Pickens or – No, nah, he was before He's older? Me. All right, yeah. maybe yeah. I'm showing my age on this one. If you can't go to the Super Bowl <laughs> with them dudes, <laughs> you're not going. And yet Joe Burrow in his second season and, – and keep in mind, coming off of a major injury – Yep. Coming yeah. off of a – you usually are supposed to take a year to get yourself acclimated to being back at the speed of the game with your injury, post-injury. He's done it a year removed from that season-ending injury. He's restored in me. When you look at a guy, you say, they just drafted a guy that totally changed the trajectory of this organization. That's what he's restored in me. And that's why I think that you can't go into this game and say philosophically, this is why the game is going to go this way, or this is why the game is going to go that way. Because I think that this is one of those things where you may be seeing history in the making taking place with Joe Burrow. You may be seeing that take place. Hey, treat every Monday like it's Monday Night Football and grab a Zing Zang. Zing Zang brings easy, great-tasting bartender-quality cocktails to help kick off the good times. Zing Zang has margaritas, Bloody Marys, and bourbon sours ready to drink tonight. Go to ZingZang.com to find out where to stock up, please. Zing Zang responsibly. We're at Hollywood Park Casino. Come on down. If you're not able to come down, you can also uh, watch the live stream of the show on our YouTube channel and on Facebook. They actually put us up today, Rodney, which is highly unusual. They did? Highly unusual for us. Wow. I think it's our first appearance. Love. We got love, Fred. You know, Don Martin walked up. You know what he said? What? I think this is pretty good. He knew your name? No, he just he said called him no. Him. No, he said he didn't walk up and say him. He said no. I think it's pretty good. Him over there. Yeah, right. That guy. Him pretty said good. he, he wants the milk and cookies. <laughs> he going downstairs. <laughs> All right, we're st we've still got stuff to give away, including that thousand uh, dollar pack of tickets to Shaq's Fun House on Friday at the Shrine. Come on down here. We're here till three o'clock on AM five seventy LA Sports, your home of the Rams and Super Bowl fifty six. <laughs> We'll be right back here on AM570 LA Sports.
Pizza. Lions never being in the game. Tails. Adele. Ready for a real cocktail? Introducing new Zing Zang ready to drink cocktails in a can. America's number one Bloody Mary mix with vodka. Zing Zang margaritas, tequila included. And whiskey sours with real Kentucky bourbon. Real cocktails, real ingredients, really good. New Zing Zang full strength canned cocktails. Legendary taste, legendary day. Always ready. Power up with the Power Plus mouth guard. Power Plus is the next step in human evolution. By simply placing your jaw into the Power Plus position, you'll be able to achieve maximum strength, speed, and endurance, even mitigate concussion. Power Plus mouth guard in a 13 year study is showing lower concussion rates to 0.26%. For maximum performance and protection, get Power Plus today or order now. It will include a free carry case. Power up with Power Plus. Excited to be here, excited to preview the Super Bowl experience, which is the interactive football festival for fans of all ages. In LA County, we're excited to welcome you this weekend. This is your weekend to come if you are an Angelina. Super Bowl week is here. Hey, LeVar, you were saying that uh, watching Joe Burrow play gave you faith and looking at someone that could be a franchise quarterback. Do you yeah. think Justin Herbert of the Chargers yes. possesses those same skills? Yes. Yeah, he's a bad man. Uh, his, his, 
his abilities. You know, what I like about Burrow and and guys like Herbert is they do have athletic ability. They're not yeah. just statuesque quarterbacks. They can move, and and that's something that will be a factor in this game because Matthew Stafford he can run pretty good. He can run, but Joe Burrow he he's lightweight can be elusive. I mean, you saw him make some plays in last week's game. They don't happen if he doesn't show escapability. And sometimes that's truly important. That defensive front is is along the same lines as the defensive front he's going to see in the Super Bowl. Those guys are are very, very gifted and very talented all the way across the board. So when you look at uh, a guy like Herbert, who is, I, I mean, Joe Burrow is bigger than what I thought to be honest. So you, you get a guy that's as big as a Joe Burrow and certainly as big as, as Herbert is, and they're able to, to do the things that they're able to do. Um, it's, he has franchise quarterback written all on him as well. But with that being said, to qualify, so did Andrew Luck. So does Lamar Jackson. So does, I mean, you, you look at some of these other names out here. So does Dak Prescott. But they ain't made it to the big game. Like, when I look at it, and I'm like, man, that's franchise. Like, that that man took the See, this, Cincinnati this is, this is Bengals. This is what I'm talking about right here. What I said, he's giving all the credit to Burrow. It's yeah. too much credit. Well, it's too much credit. Hey. The defense held Kansas City to three points in the second half. True, if the yeah. defense doesn't do that, we they not in the, they not in the Super Bowl. The quarterbacks take it way too much credit, <laughs> and we love it. Joe Burrow, <laughs> <laughs> Joe Burrow, just, Justin Herbert, those are franchise guys. But the moment right now belongs to Joe Burrow because, regardless of if they get too much credit or not enough credit, whatever the credit. That man is is in the position that everybody puts the focal point on and with a franchise that people would say, eh, they have talent. They've always had talent. They've always been good. They've always been that team that, man, they'll knock off the Steelers here and there or they'll, they'll knock off the, the Ravens here and there. But they're not going to win the North and they're not going to be a legitimate Super Bowl contender. Just is what it is. So for that narrative to change, I'm not going to sit there and say that, uh, well, Chase, is that, that might be a different deal. But you tell me, is this, is this, court, is this receiving ta- uh, core and tandem better than the one you had when you were there? Yeah, they are. No way. They are. No way. No they way. And, and no way. Don't get me wrong. No Joe way. deserves a ton of credit. No Justin way. Justin Herbert, franchise quarterback? No question. Hold that's, on, that's hold, not, that's hold not, on, hold I want to revisit this. You're telling me Higgins, Boyd, and Chase is better than the, the tandem of Ocho Cinco, TJ Hutchmanzada, and when uh, let's Henry. We'll go with uh, Henry. They've done more than what we've done at an earlier point. Are they better receivers than me and Chad? Yeah, that ain't I don't what think. I'm asking. As you none, know the none, truth. None, you know the none, truth none, of none, that, that question. We'll say it for you. Those, those, you those, know those, the truth of that question. They, Jamar Chase, what he did as a rookie – I yeah. didn't play much as a rookie. Neither did Chad. Um, I'll give now, I'll give can, you I'll can, give you accomplishment of of Chase. I'll give you Jamar Chase. Can they run routes and get open the way that me and Chad could? No, no, no. I mean, our offense was strictly line up. If me and Chad didn't get open, and we y'all didn't, couldn't get we out, didn't of, win. And y'all couldn't get out of the first round of the playoffs. We didn't go in motion with, with Carson Palmer. Uh, we didn't run stack formations. But I think the, the year that Carson got hurt was it was a was that, a factor. In okay, that. that's, fair. Yeah. that's fair. That's fair. Because I think Olin Ben Hoffman. Yeah, right? I, I believe so. I get that because you, that's a penalty nowadays. That is and it's a big touching. fine and a big fine. That's yeah. that's, that's fair. Yeah. Herbert man is that dude. Herbert is really good. Uh, I thought Brandon Staley failed him a little bit. I, Brandon thank Staley you. coaches. Whoa, thank you. He coaches NFL yeah. games like I, I play Madden. Yeah. yeah. You know what? Ah, see, yeah. That's ah, interesting. There's no, con- yeah. there's no oh, consequence. No. Right. Fourth and seven, how I'm going for it. Yeah. <laughs> my, <laughs> like, it's just like my own 18 yard line, or whatever. Yeah, he, he just. Doing. Yeah. I mean, literally, this is the NFL, and he's coaching. I promise you the same way I play how the defense I'm playing is pretty good. I'll punt it. I think I can get I'm going to go. That's how he's coaching. And so he'll learn from that. At least I hope he will. That's how few of them but are But he, he's putting Herbert in a bad position 
He's putting the team in a bad position. Your defense isn't very good, and you know they're they're not very good. You act like you got the eighty five Bears or the uh, two thousand Baltimore Ravens defense, yeah. and you're going for it on fourth down the way he does. And so he'll learn from that. But I, I think uh, Justin Herbert is by far and away one of the best young quarterbacks. Yeah, it's a ton of really Great good young, young quarterbacks. Josh Allen, Josh There's Allen, a is, lot of it's, Josh uh, Allen's the best. Yeah. I think the thing about. Um, Joe Burrow, though, is when you hear and you you know we hear it nowadays. You can hear sound bites and sidelines and guys. Just the the belief that no matter the situation, you said this earlier. No matter the situation, no matter how far they're down, I think the team. And I'm not just talking about the offensive side. I'm talking about the defensive side. They think they're in it. They think they're in it. Yeah. And they think they can win it. And Joe's gonna get it done for them. Yeah. And for a guy that's in his second year. That's that's pretty remarkable for the team to believe in that guy like that. Um, they believe like that yeah. in Detroit with you, no? Yeah, we were always down by thirty though. <laughs> so that, that was, that was not realistic. <laughs> not realistic to get us back. But as a, you know, when you think and, and we stand on the quarterbacks on the Matthew Stafford side, I, I think the thing that worries me or concerned and and it showed itself this year is that a lot of times he played like he was in Detroit. Like, like he he played like I got a gun. Sl- I got to take my chances. I got to squeeze it in there. I got to do things because we're down, and I got to bring us back. He didn't play like a guy that had one of the best defenses in the league. And I've said this often throughout the season. It's like you got to understand what defense you have. They're not going to give up points. Make a team drive 80 yards to score on your defense. Don't give them easy stuff. And as a quarterback, it's hard to do because you want you think you can make all the plays. But sometimes punting – and playing defense is a good strategy as a quarterback. Hmm. I, I look at it as every quarterback, if you think about it, has bad games. Tom Brady has a few every year. Stafford had three or four this year. Fair. It's magnified because we see every game that he's playing in. Mm-hmm. We're in this market that he's playing in. I can't recall a quarterback when we played, having 16 really good games. No. They're going to have – the elite quarterbacks are going to have two to four, damn, type of games. What was that type of games? Matthew Stafford is no different. He, to me, is one of the elite quarterbacks in a game of football, but because of the Tennessee game and other games, we look, the Mm -hmm. 49ers, and Mm -hmm. we – is he this type of level quarterback? I believe he is. And and so – and through the pressure, he had to play. Hold on, hold year. on, TJ. Hold on, hold on. You're giving them quarterbacks way too much credit, brother. <laughs> we're, we're, You're giving them no, way no, no. too much credit, we're, player. We're, we're talking nah, about, man. We're nah, talking don't get about, carried away out We're, up we're in talking here. about. Let's keep it let Let's keep it real play. in. Let's we're keep talk, it dialed in. You know, we're talking about his play. <laughs> Who's the top quarterbacks in the league? And ju- just look at the team around him. Just look at the team around him. Josh Allen, he was really good. He got Stephon Diggs. He was really great. What a coincidence. What a coincidence. You just, still got to get it there. Just look at the quarterbacks that we perceive to be the best and look at the team around them. Do you realize? Trevor Lawrence, everybody said he was one of the best quarterbacks we've ever seen. Did he show that this year? No. I wonder why. Watch what happens in the next couple of years. All of a sudden, he can play again. I don't know that to I be true. I wonder why. I wonder why. I don't know that to be true. Okay. Why? Because of Jacksonville? <laughs> He I don't know that to be hey, true. Blaine Gabbert <laughs> won in Jacksonville. Trevor yeah. Lawrence can win there. I don't know that to be true. That's all I'm gonna say. And, and I, 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 again, I think, I think where we are right now, the bird in the hand is that Joe Burrow led this team to the Super Bowl. Whether we want to give the defense a ton of credit, whether we want to give his personnel groupings and and the people that are out there credit in the receiving core, whether we want to give it to the play call, we all know this is the ultimate team sport. We all know that everything. All things given, everything has to fit together for you to be able to accomplish what you're seeking to accomplish. But the bottom line is we all know the most important position on the field Say it. Say is it loud. the quarterback Say it position. With your chest. It, it is. It he's is. Been, he's been brainwashed. I'm he's not, been brainwashed. I'm not. I'm not. They touch the ball every play outside of the center. The center is pretty important, too. And I said, I was just looking that up. I said Blaine Gabbard. I meant Blake Bortles. Sorry. Blake Bortles, yes, yeah. Sorry. Yeah, because Blaine Gabbard didn't do anything, but, but I didn't want to put you on front street in think, front of just, all these just good people. Just think about the quarterbacks that are <laughs> it, considered it's all right. bad. 
I mean, there have been some that. guys. I mean, how many Super Bowls did did uh the can't miss prospect of Andrew Luck playing? How many he playing? Can't miss. How many he playing? Zero. Oh, oh, Zipola. Zip, <laughs> zip, zip, Zipola. Who did he have to throw the ball to? Wait, yeah, who he had? Hey. Who did he have? Reggie hey, Wayne? What, what, did he hey, have Reggie Wayne? Reggie Wayne was no. at the end of his career. Who, who else? T.Y. The... Hilton? What, what pick was Andrew Luck? Who did he have? What Pierre pick was Garçon? What pick was Andrew Luck? One. One. So that means his team was god-awful. What pick, god was, awful. What, what pick was Joe Burrow? Andrew Luck retired. What pick was Joe Burrow? He was one. Oh, oh. That, so that Burrow, means his team was god awful. No, yes. And Joe okay. Burrow is a better quarterback than Andrew Luck, obviously. But Ooh, Joe Burrow. People wouldn't have said that coming out. But people wouldn't have said that coming out. Show. Hey. <laughs> people wouldn't have said that coming out. LeVar. Andrew Luck. They Look said, at Joe Burrow's receivers. They said, Come on, man. You're tell tripping. me I'm wrong. Tell me I'm wrong, Rodney. Did they not say that Andrew Luck was a generational talent that we have not seen since who? One what? Thank you. Yeah, okay. Thank did. you. Finish and, that and sentence. Who's this, they did not say that about – they said he? Joe Burrow had a great season, the greatest season all time in college maybe yep. uh, of a quarterback ever. But they did not compare him to John Elway hey, coming last, out as the a last, The last time prospect. I checked, the last time I checked, Andrew Luck receivers weren't breaking records when he was there. That's all I know. They weren't breaking records. But you're making my point. No, you're making my you're point. You're making my point. I say, my point is, is that you can call somebody a franchise quarterback, but that doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to play out that way if at got, the NFL level. If you level. got franchise players with you, it will. I think you yeah. both. I, I think you both He's make wrong, your point. Fred. Don't agree with him. He's wrong. He's wrong, Fred. Don't agree with him. He's wrong. It's too late. He is, he is uh, all the way wrong. Uh, get the free all the way wrong. wrong. With alignment health plans, <laughs> Ava, PPO plan. Visit alignmenthealthplan.com today. We're here for another hour at Hollywood Park Casino. Thank all of you for coming out. Hey, we're sorry, y'all. We're sorry. We've got a lot Don't to give sorry. away. It's real. It's real. And you can watch the show today, the live stream of the show on YouTube channel and on Marvel. Facebook, AM570 LA Sports, your home of the Rams and Super Bowl 56. We'll be right back here on AM570 LA Sports. Football Festival for fans of all ages. In LA County, we're excited to welcome you this weekend. This is your weekend to come if you are an Angelina. us at the Third Street Promenade for the largest free football event in the city, the Tailgate Tour, February 10th through 12th, featuring live broadcasts, NFC Champion LA Ram photo opportunities, the LA Charger Experience, plus free food and drinks. The Tailgate Tour is coming back to LA in your invite. Sponsored by Takis, Captain Morgan, Fox Sports Radio, AM570 LA Sports, and KTLA Channel 5. Ready for a real cocktail? Introducing new Zing Zang ready to drink cocktails in a can. America's number one Bloody Mary mix with vodka. Zing Zang margaritas, tequila included. And whiskey sours with real Kentucky bourbon. Real cocktails, real ingredients, really good. New Zing Zang full strength canned cocktails. Legendary taste, legendary day. Always ready.
download the free iHeartRadio app and search AM570 LA Sports to listen to us wherever you go. Power up with the Power Plus Mouth Guard. Power Plus is the next step in human evolution. By simply placing your jaw into the Power Plus position, you'll be able to achieve maximum strength, speed, and endurance, even mitigate concussion. Power Plus Mouth Guard in a 13 year study is showing lower concussion rates to 0.26%. For maximum performance and protection, get Power Plus today or order now. It will include a free carry case. Power up with Power Plus. T.J. Hushmanzada, Super Bowl week, Hollywood Park Casino! Oh, Rodney know how to get him pumped up. Yeah, let's TJ. go, let's go. I'm, I'm not quite Flavor Flay, but I'm a, I can be a hype man. You can hype it? Lebar- yeah, I can hype I it up. I see. Yeah. I see, all right. All hey, right. Uh, and and don't, and remember, uh, Eric Dickerson's going to join us here in a little bit in the next segment. So we'll, come on, we hurry get, on up. We That's going to be the, uh, interesting. The take from the Rambassador. The what Rambassador. That's what he called yeah. himself. Y'all, yeah. see, yeah. Hey, y'all seen on, the commercial? <laughs> y'all seen the commercial of him running the Soul Five? Boy, he still got that form, but he ain't got that body. Boy. I tell you, we all we all grow oh, up, don't we? Then hey. we used to love watching E.D. Oh, run though. his form was dope. Uh, so I mean, and I'm a I was a tailback. Uh huh. So I was trying to emulate how he ran the ball because I was tall. He was yeah. tall. I was like, let me get try to find he that had stride. The curl and the and the goggles. What, and the what whole did thing. y'all say? It Is looked wet, in here with a jerry but it was today? dry. <laughs> he gonna come in with a jerry curl today? <laughs> that jerry curl was drippy drip, but it was dry. Yeah, it was. <laughs> um, before he comes on, though, I want to get into something, guys, because it, it is about our league and what we, you know, the league that which we played, and today. Uh, Lovey Smith got the job oh, in Houston. Okay. okay. Um, and so, which is a good thing. But as we've seen over the years, right, and we this year there was a – I don't know if this was a record number of openings uh, in, in the NFL. It was high. It was a very high It was very number. high. Much more and, than anticipated. And over the last four years, we've seen jobs come open, and we've heard the names of Eric Bieniemy and and Byron Leftwich and different guys that didn't get the jobs – that are black. We're going through, you know, Brian Flores with the situation in, in Miami. I just want to get your take on where the NFL is. The Rooney rule that was put in 20 some years ago that was supposed to, you know, create diversity within head coaches in the NFL, but it hasn't really worked because mm-hmm. we only got one now, two, 
with Lovey Smith. Your take, uh, Lavar, first. Your take on where the where we are with the Rooney Rule and diversification in terms of head coaches, even front office members in the NFL. Man, I think it's it's a pretty self explanatory conclusion. Is that that the Rooney Rule is really in essence, if we want to keep it from the hip, shoot it with a grip. Is wait, say that again. If you want to shoot it with a hip from the hip, one hundred percent with the grip. Uh, <laughs> It's, it's bogus. It's a, it's a bogus rule. And and you're not going to have owners being dictated to. Just start there. Owners are not going to be dictated to and how they're going to run their business. And so when when these conversations come up, you know, we were having this conversation on up on game on Saturday. You have to be careful in what the narratives are and what 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 the discussions are. It's always things happen so that you can open the lane for discussion. But see, for me, the discussion has to now turn to what are the solutions? What's the solution? And I was, I was presenting this to TJ and Plex and I'll present it to you. Cause to me, it's, it's like, if you're looking at a, a issue that is persisting and it's self-policed, like Roger Goodell in the NFL came up with that rule or, or whoever it is that, that from the NFL, from the league, came up with the Rooney rule in order to – Johnny to, Cochran. Johnny Cochran was yeah. a part of it. Yeah. In doing so, that still came internally. That's an mm-hmm. internal situation. That's an internal policing of sorts of, of the franchises. To me, if, if you really want – change of 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 the massive proportion that people are are saying they want and the outrage that that people are are um expressing then there has to be a collective body of of people coming together that makes sense to the impact of the bottom line of the national football league meaning if you want that to change then players coaches and gms have to be willing to step away. If they're not willing to step away and say, until this changes, we're going to stand in solidarity and, and hold off. Never going to happen. GM, step, okay. step away. You say, step, 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 step away. He's delusional. I'm not, I'm not delusional. Say, what I'm saying, he's step basically, away. He's basically let's saying, saying let's you're the time. GM, I'm um, the player. Right. We're going to boycott because so-and-so can't be a head coach because he's black. Man, we can't even agree on what we gonna. You think so, we can agree so on here's, that? So here's so here's the point, right? No. So, here, so here's the point. No, it's not that I'm delusional. It's that I'm saying here's a solution that would would happen would have to take place in order for an owner to look at his business model and say I can't continue on this way. Rodney, do you think that's viable for the black athletes and coaches and GMs to say? We gonna fight and stand with Brian Flores. But so it's we're not so much about it being. That. But it's not about it being viable. It's about what would need Do to happen in order realistic? for it to happen. No. Is that, and that's the point that I'm yeah. making. The point that I'm making is people have to stop acting as though you want to get upset about wanting something to change, and 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 being outraged and speaking out and saying all of these things. If you're just saying the same things over right. and over and over again, yeah. it's not and changing. It's the reason anything. why it hasn't changed though, because you you said it earlier. You've got owners who are going to do what owners do that's correct so how do you change that so you're not going to get any change unless it starts from one of those people says okay i'm gonna i'm gonna be the change two ways i'm gonna be the change that hasn't that hasn't happened we have the first female vice president because joe biden said whether you like him or not whether what's it's not a political thing i'm gonna hire a woman as my vice president and that is it there's a Supreme Court coming. I'm hiring a black woman as the next Supreme Court. See, justice. But you, you, you're but, taking but, us down a different lane. No, no, that's no, a no. different rabbit but hole. It, it has, that's I mean, a different that rabbit hole. That aren't because a lot of people would say that Joe Biden did that to win the election to okay, begin but, with. Oh, to do okay, okay, who cares about that? Right. Not, so I don't want to go down that lane. No, I'm, not, I'm not going that political lane. Right. Right. It's like and if, if what you keep you saying do? we're going to get women involved, we're going to get one, that can go that can spin one, the wheel like a hamster. If it's one owner that says that they were okay, so Houston just hired their second black coach. They just hired their second. Is that the one person that makes the change? Is that the one owner ownership group that makes the change? 
See, I'm saying yeah. so to me, what I'm saying is, is that if you want to impact change where it's like, I'm going to feel this way and I'm That's going to look at it this way. Happening. The reason why it's not going to happen is because, like you said, it's not feasible to think that guys would put their their livelihood. You're not put their no. put, put their what their hard Lamar, work has been for all these years. Right. You, you, you play in the league. It. But there, many, that's a qualifier. How many coaches would do that for you? How many coaches would lose? I got a family. I got a wife and kids. Right. I'm not doing that. And no. I was a but, player. And I love you. But, uh, but, but, I love you. but I'm but not you're doing make, that. But y'all are making my point. You it, see what I'm saying? But, y'all are making. If it's not impacting them, if it's not impacting no. the owners, if they're not being impacted. It's not going to happen. And if you don't think that those owners know that that's what we're thinking It as doesn't players. matter what the owners think, what we think. Yes, it does. It, it does play, matter. No player is going to do it. Anything that's happened that's big in this world by change, it's by force. And, uh, okay. It's force. Okay, so what does it's that mean? It's by force. Okay, so what does that mean? Like, as a government, we want something to happen, we do it by force. Okay, got, so what does that mean? It's, it's not going to happen. That means you step but away. The problem is this. As you were a black quarterback before right. we were thought of, we're not smart enough to play the position Correct. because the white guys are smart. They're just smart. We can't process and think like the white quarterbacks. And then guys like you and Doug Williams shown like, ah, that's not the case. So you fast, go play receiver, go play DB. That is starting to change. Mm -hmm. It eventually will get to where no, there's more minority no, it coaches. Won't. It won't. It's just going to take it's time. Not, no, the minority coaches works. aren't given an opportunity to fail like white coaches. Had, had that's Rosa, a fact. Had Rosa yeah. Parks that's, not got her, her ass up out of that seat. And then she had not got her up out of that seat. And it led to them boycotting Lamar, those. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. No, you talked for five hold minutes. Hold what hold you on. mean, hold on? Hold on. <laughs> you talked the whole segment. <laughs> hold on. If, if Rosa Parks doesn't get up, what what does Martin Luther King do in that peaceful protest, DJ? Lamar, what, what did they do to the buses? Everything you're saying sounds good. It's not going to happen. Nobody's going to do that. Again. You wouldn't do that as a player. But, uh, you're, but you uh, want the other players am, to do it. No, I'm not saying I want them to do anything. I, what I'm would saying you do to you player? is... No, nah, he no, I wouldn't. Because uh -huh. I know what my I know where, where what my my agenda is. I know what, what my priorities and where they lie. But what I'm saying is in theory, in theory, what else is going to happen to get the owners to move from the stance that they have right now, which is new we owners. will do it how but new how owners. how do you get new owners? Denver's for sale. How do you and, and, and who are another, they going to sell it to? Robert Smith. And Robert Smith, okay. It, Robert Smith, well, the, the former running back. Look, look, this is how bad it is, Rodney. Yeah. It was two, two black GMs were hired. They didn't yeah. hire a black coach. They hired two white dudes. They didn't hire a black coach. And so, like, number one, you're not telling somebody who to hire. You hire who you see will right. do the best job. It is what it is. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. The problem with this is, LeVar's point is, we as players, you play for a black coach, he ain't got your back like that, man. And you ain't got that, his. And exactly. <laughs> and so that's why everybody looks after themselves. Is it a problem? That's because, the truth. And, and is it an issue because this game that we've played, it's not a lifelong career because it's, uh, it's, it's got a shelf life. life. It does have it's a got shelf, a shelf life. life. As so players, to your, yes. to your, to your you know, suggestion because you're listening. It can't to, work. You're, you're you're internalizing what I'm saying to well, you right but now. But it, it can't it can't it can't work because the lifespan of a football player is four years. Uh, coaches don't coach four times it longer can't than work. us. It can work if every single player, every single GM, every single coach that felt that this was applicable to them on that level stepped away. And I'm gonna tell you why it will work. Is because it would now put the owners in a critical position to figure out how to put the best product out there on the field and they would not be able to do it. That's the point of it. But people aren't thinking on that level and to be able to, and it's again, not realistic. Okay. But if it's not realistic, then it's not realistic to sit here and bitch and moan about there not being enough inclusion and minorities that are in these positions. Because if we're not impacting the bottom line, if the bottom line isn't being impacted, then they're not going to change. The viewership is still there. The attendance is still there. Man, All listen, those things are still there. So what do they need you, to change? You, give, you know what they need to change? The black coaches that complain about this, hire a black offensive coordinator, hire a black defensive coordinator, put them in positions 
to where they can advance. But they might not advance. Y'all go look at the black coaches that had these positions of power and see who their coordinators were. Y'all go look. Y'all do your own research. And so if you want that to happen, put them in positions of power so that they could possibly advance and be that next coach. They don't do that. Some do. Majority, they don't. That's reality. Facts. It got real when Fred left, didn't it? Look, look, look. (laughs) We love it. We love it. We love it. Uh, tomorrow, listen up. Tomorrow, starting at four for the first time ever. Listen to the EA Sports Mad Bowl Finals live in HD on iHeartRadio. Hey, Rodney, I need to get on that. <laughs> yeah, you are you good, man? I'll, yes. beat them, I'll beat them dudes that's in that game. It's got the biggest prize pool in MCS history, one million dollars. Download the free iHeartRadio app today. Search EA Sports Madden NFL. I'm lying. They'll beat me. <laughs> they will be. <laughs> and we are the home of the Rams in Super Bowl 56 live stream on YouTube and Facebook. We'll be right back. <laughs> Download the free iHeartRadio app and search AM570 LA Sports to listen to us wherever you go. Stay tuned. We'll be right back here on AM570 LA Sports. at the 3rd Street Promenade for the largest free football event in the city, the Tailgate Tour, February 10th through 12th, featuring live broadcasts, NFC Champion LA Ram photo opportunities, the LA Charger Experience, plus free food and drinks. The Tailgate Tour is coming back to LA in your invite. Sponsored by Takis, Captain Morgan, Fox Sports Radio, AM570, LA Sports, and KTLA Channel 5. EA Sports Madden NFL. Now we're playing sudden death. For the first time ever. That's what I'm talking about, baby. That's what I'm talking about. You can listen to the action of the Madden Championship Series live with the grand prize of the largest prize pool in MCS history. One million dollars. Featuring 14 of the world's best players. Let's go, we're the best. We've witnessed a year-long journey. A season of triumph, heartbreak, and redemption. Tuesday, the EA Sports Madden Bowl Championship. Championship Series Finale, live from 4 to 6 p.m. We're trying to be champions this year, man. In the end, there will only be one. I'm the best in the world! The Madden Championship Series 22, live in HD on iHeartRadio. All shows are Pacific Standard Time. Power up with the Power Plus Mouth Guard. Power Plus is the next step in human evolution. By simply placing your jaw into the Power Plus position, you'll be able to achieve maximum strength, speed, and endurance, even mitigate concussion. Power Plus Mouth Guard in a 13-year study has shown 
lower concussion rates to 0.26%. For maximum performance and protection, get Power Plus today or order now. It will include a free carry case. Power up with Power Plus. And our special guest has now joined us, brought to you by the Ford F-150, the official truck of the Super Bowl. Test drive one at your local Southern California dealership today. Let's bring him on, our man, the Rambassador, <laughs> the one and only, 2103. <laughs> this is wow. 2105. I shorted you two yards. 2105, Eric Dickerson. ED. Ed, what's, what's going on? You got it. what's up, Rodney? What's up, Levar? What's, what's up, up Smooth? Eric, you got a busy week, man. Right? What, what you yeah, got laid yeah. down, huh? Ram ambassador. <laughs> uh, I, I got a lot of stuff. I got, I'm, I'm gonna be over at um, Radio Row tomorrow. I've got to go to Owens County tomorrow. I got I got a lot of stuff. I can't, man. I got I, I got this calendar. I don't, you know, I'm, and I'm forgetful too. So <laughs> shoot, <laughs> man, it's, it's hurting me. Let's put it like that. But it's a good thing. So you fit to put the goggles back on and start running to to all of the stops you got to be at tomorrow. Hey, I, I look. I ran all the way from New York over to LA for the Super Bowl. Did you see, did you see the sleep number? That's, one? Yes, <laughs> that's, that's, that's what I'm referencing. You, I said I'm, you I'm still tired. got the form. I said you still got the form now. When I saw you, you just that you just ain't built like that old that old Pony Express ED no more. Though. I, 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 had, I used to have a thin waist back then. Man. You <laughs> Hey, what you thinking, hey, man? Well, I know you ain't talking. No, look, look not, down. Not at all. <laughs> <laughs> that's why, hey, that's why I do it with pride. That, that thing is a badge of honor. You're coaching now. That, that, I am a coach now, so you got to have a belly. You got to be able to have the, the belly to pull your shorts over. You know what I mean? That, that's just how that thing <laughs> works, man. Hey, 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 Rodney, LeVar used to look like Superman. He, he had that cut up body. You know what that was like. Oh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> now yeah. I look like man, man, you know, like that, that's eating uh, onion rings and, and – uh, Funyuns and stuff like that. Hey, hey, E, talk to me about mm -hmm. your expectations for this game. I mean, there is a lot riding on this. Like, it's it's one thing to feel the pride of what St. Louis was doing when they were the greatest show on turf, but now they're back. They're back here in Los Angeles, and and now they have an opportunity to redeem that loss that they took a couple years back. How big is this game, and in, in your from your estimation? Well, I, th I think it's huge, and, and and I feel a lot better with this football team than I did when they went to the Super Bowl and they played the uh, the uh, New England Patriots, and not the football team in general. Just just, and I'll be honest, just our quarterback situation. I, I was very uncomfortable with that. I kept telling people quietly that you know I wish we just had another quarterback. <laughs> you know, we'd be in a better position. And you know, we're glad to get there. Look, Jared Goff played 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 well for us. He, he really did. He did what he could do. But I always felt that that was our position that we were really hurting at a missing missing piece because we had so many other pieces now look at this team here and we have all we have a lot of pieces i mean receivers running backs as cam Akers is back defense 
um, you know, it's no reason that, that that we shouldn't win this football game. And see, I can say that because I don't have to go out and get hit. I don't have to play. <laughs> so so I, I, I can say, I, you know, they, they can put stuff up. I see on, on the board, but don't mean nothing. I, they ain't going to get me no way. Mm-hmm. So uh, I just feel like this is the, this is the, a team that they put together. And, and you know, I got to give Les, Les Snead a credit for it. I mean, he went all in, you know, for, for, the, for this right now. And that's to go to the Super Bowl, you know, to go in, get Jalen Ramsey. You know, to go get Von Miller to to sign OBJ. I mean, and when uh, Cooper, uh well, not Cooper, we have Cooper Cup, but when uh, our receiver Woods. got um, Robert went Woods. down, Robert, Robert, Woods. Robert Woods went yeah. down, Robert, Robert Woods down, bringing OBJ. I mean, that was big. And uh, I look at this football team only, and I still say this all the time on our show, Rodney, is, is that the only way that we we lose, we beat ourselves, and and the way we beat ourselves in a lot of ways is turn the football over. Mm-hmm. I mean, if we, if we hang on to the ball. It's hard for anyone to beat us. I always say that, you know, especially in playoff situations, you know, both you guys know that as well as I do. You know, you turn the ball over, a lot of bad things happen. Mm-hmm. All right, Eric, when you when you look at this game and you talk about pressure, because uh, Sean McVay has said this, that in the game, Super Bowl against New England, that he got out coached. Got out coached in the second half. They got it back, got his quarterback. Who has more pressure? Is it Sean McVay or is it is it Matthew Stafford to kind of finish the chapter that he's had on this season? Well, I mean, it's both, really. You know, and I, I can't say that Sean McVay has a lot of pressure because, you know, he's a coach. He'll, he'll, coach, he'll, he'll. I think he'll, I think he'll have a, another shot at this, and maybe even three or four more. Who knows if, if if he has the teams? But if you want to say the most pressure, maybe on Matt Stafford, I'd say because you know people have said about him, you know, oh, Matt Stafford can't win a playoff game. You know, uh, you know, he still puts up all the great numbers, but he can't win. And, and and all I can say is, man, look look at where he was at. He he's a, he was in Detroit. I said it to a guy in the, in the grocery store yesterday. You know, you're talking about, you know, man, Matt Stafford puts up great numbers. But I said, okay. I said, how do you think Tom Brady would have been did in, in Detroit his whole career? I'm sorry, but I don't think he did much better. I mean, you and you play on these bad football teams, you have no choice to be. You you can't they say I can't be undrafted. I don't want to play for that team. It's very rare you can do that. You know, you're stuck. And then I got to give him credit. He 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 played great there. He played he played put up great numbers. But never get over the big one. You never hear him saying Barry Sanders didn't win a playoff game or um, um, or Calvin Johnson win a playoff game. It's always it's always the superstar player. It's the quarterback. Or when I was in Indianapolis, I won't forget my last year, like you there. I mean, I was getting blamed for everything. I'm like, hell, I don't play defense. I don't, I don't play special teams. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I don't I don't play all that. So, but but the pressure is on Matt Stafford. But you know what? He's won three playoff games. If you want to say it, he's won them, you know, because you, you see, you, you give him the give him the bad, so give him the good. He won three playoff games, especially the one in Tampa. You know, he came back, and we put ourselves in a bad situation with turnovers, and with 30, 42 seconds left, he, you know, he led us to, to a, 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 a basically a field goal to win the game. Hey, Edie, let me, let me ask you this. If you had to just point to one thing, what is the key to the game? What would that one thing be? Well, I, I'm going to say two things. I think the, the major thing is, is turnovers. If we don't turn the ball over, just like I said in Tampa, I said this when we went to Tampa, and Rodney, you know, I said this on air. Mm-hmm. I said, you know, they tell me, oh, Tom Brady, I said, let me tell you something. If we don't turn the ball over, I said, we control that game from beginning to end. I said, it could be a blowout. And I, I feel like the same thing here. If we don't turn the football over, we will control this football game. I mean, I, I just don't have any doubt. I mean, Cincinnati is a good football team. We're better than Kansas City. We have a better defense. Mm-hmm. And, and we're at home. We're at home. I mean, we 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 can we can score just like anyone else can. We can score. We have more weapons. I mean, I know they got to, uh, the receiver that's really fast. But my guy at, at Kansas City that's fast as hell. But you know, I just think we have more weapons and and a, and a more rounded team. So, you know, I just feel like the the big the big thing is TJ is just not turn the football over with no turnovers. I said we will control this football game. I think from beginning to end. And I can't. You know, look, I'm not taking it away from Cincinnati. You know they're a good, they're a very good football team with Joe Burrows and Joe Mixon. I like, I like Joe Mixon with Jamar Chase. You know, I, when I was in um, 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 Las, I mean, um, Mexico with, with Jamar Chase, I met him. He's a rookie, and uh, I told him, I said, man, I said you got drafted by Cincinnati. I said, man, I said I feel bad for you. Man. <laughs> I just told him, I said, man, I said good luck. I said I wish you to win any place else, but that place, and. Now he's in the Super Bowl. So, you know, it just goes to show, you know, when you get young guys in that don't have that mindset, that losing mindset, because, no, losing comes a mindset. You know, if you, if you get used to it, you know, it just becomes part of you. I mean, it does. And, and, and these are young guys, him and Joe Burrows, that, that group, 
this is a different set. This is different. These are different players. This is a different set of players. They don't have that losing mindset. They're like, we're the Cincinnati Bengals. And, you know, we used to call them the Bungles. You know, and we call it we call it we call the Browns the clowns. So you know, that, that was the area we played it. But you know, we feel like the bungles. They gonna bungle it up. They gonna mess it up. <laughs> TJ over here, man. Come on, man. Why? Hey, man, Why? Hey, man. Hey, the hey, Bengals gonna give them a run hey, for their hey, money. Hey, like this, 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 this is what TJ was having to leave. He's gonna hear. Hey, they was calling us that when I was there. See, see that, that name trans that, that name transcended way from the '80s on over to a TJ play. Dang. <laughs> Uh, and we used to call the Browns the clowns. <laughs> yeah, they still might be the clowns. Where they, where they, where they, where they can't can't get over the hump. Um, player wise, now Ed, um, for, player for the Rams and player for the Bengals, and I ask you two guys this too: um, Who's going to have a big day? And and I'll start with you, Ed. Who do you think is going to have a big day? I, not not necessarily who has to, but who will have a big day on Super Bowl Sunday. Well, you know, for for you talk about for both teams, yeah. I really believe that 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 Joe Burrow would have a. I think he'll have a good day. I think I think he'll have a good day. I, I mean, I if if we if we get to him, it, it could slow him down. But I, you know, I, I think the big thing is for me is is Joe Mixon. I mean, I, I've I've said all year that I like him. I, I like the way he runs the football. We've had trouble sometimes stopping the run. I mean, that that's sometimes been our Achilles heel. So if you want to say someone that could have a, a, a big day, if, if, if they caught us in a weakness, it would be Joe Mixon, you know, with Cincinnati, the way he runs the football. I think I like the way he runs hard. You know, they have a, they, they mix it up a little bit. I've got the other back's name, but he, they, he does a good job. Um, for the Rams, you know, I, I, I think that guy, I think it's going to be OBJ. I, I do. I, 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 think, I think this could be his breakout game. You know, I mean, I, you know, think about this guy has been on a few football teams and coming out of Cleveland, you know, and they were all this bad, you know, the bad stuff they said about, oh, he's not a team player. And, um, you know, he throws with the quarterback, those interceptions because of him. Well, hey, brother, <laughs> he's like, I, I know he got to be loving it, man. He just got to be <laughs> loving it. Being in L.A., you know, sunshine, the Hollywood, the, the weather, you know, going to the Super Bowl. And and he hasn't had that, like, that, that, dang, that, that great game, that, that big, big game. So I, I'm, I'm, th- I'm thinking this could be for OBJ's week. Mm, LeVar. I think Reader, I think Reader is a guy that you got to, uh, again, I think that the game will Gonna be. have a big game? I think it will be Man, one or lost. you've been lost. watching these games? It, I think it will be one or lost <laughs> up front in the trenches. Wow. <laughs> I think it will be one or lost up front in the trenches. And I think when you look at at, at what these guys are are going to be dealing with in this game, it's going to be who controls the line of scrimmage. So I could pick anybody from from up up front. I'm gonna say Reader because he's in, he's he's an interior lineman. I think that whoever wins interiorly, it's going to make you a mean, difference. Reader is a Reader's linebacker. The, I got it wrong. I got it wrong. Then I got it wrong. So you don't. Believe I would say no, no. Nah, nah, the, the nose tackle DJ Reader is you, a. That's the Bengals. Right. That's what I said. That's well. I'm picking. You said from either yeah, team, either right? Team, yeah. Team. You said either team. So I'm picked the nose tackle, the interior lineman for the Bengals, because I, I really do believe if if they are able to win up front in the interior, it's going to open things up on the outside where they're not able to to really dictate to to the to the outside pass rushers for the Bengals. I think that that's the key because if they are able to do that, then they will be able to rattle Matthew Stafford. If they're able to ma- rattle Matthew Stafford. Then I think that they have a chance to to really have an impactful day. If that does not happen, and they give Matthew Stafford too much time, or they're able to establish the run and continue to run the ball, that back I said this: the secondary for for Cincinnati will not be able to stand up for four quarters against a passing attack that does not have pressure on Stafford. So I put it on Reader because he's the interior lineman for the Bengals. Okay, okay, DJ. Okay, I mean. All right. For me, me and Ed, we offensive guys. We stay on the offensive side of the ball. So I'm gonna say, go. I'm gonna say, T. Higgins has to have a big game. In games like this, you don't let the best offensive player determine and beat you. And so the Rams, they're gonna try their best to take Jamar Chase out of the game as they should. And so T. Higgins is gonna have to come up big, and he can. And so I'll say T. Higgins defensively. 
But when, when I look at the Rams, it, it's going to come down to Aaron no, Donald. <laughs> no, you, like Aaron Donald, <laughs> Aaron Ron Donald. Miller, yeah, those guys, yeah, they're going to do their thing. They're going to give you what they give you because yeah. they are great players. Right. It's a guy that's, I'm going to say Eric Weddle. Okay. He's been out of football. He comes back and it's, it's like he hadn't missed a beat, like he'd been playing. Yeah. But they get that pressure up front. And so if he has a big game or if he's able to just mentally see something and help other guys out, um, it will play in the rounds favor. So if, if I had to go, I would say T. Higgins needs to have a big game for the Bengals or Eric Weddle for the Rams. Gotcha. Our business with Eric Dickerson are brought to you by the Ford F-150, the official truck of the Super Bowl. Test drive one at your local Southern California dealership today. Uh, we'll be right back to say our goodbyes. Thank you. Hollywood Park Casino, AM570 LA Sports. Us at the Third Street Promenade for the largest free football event in the city, the Tailgate Tour, February 10th through 12th, featuring live broadcasts, NFC Champion LA Ram photo opportunities, the LA Charger Experience, plus free food and drinks. The Tailgate Tour is coming back to LA in your invite. Sponsored by Takis, Captain Morgan, Fox Sports Radio, AM 570, LA Sports, and KTLA Channel 5. Super Week, Los Angeles. And you can be super and part of the action with us, the Petros and Money Show, live Tuesday, February 8th, starting early at Flex Alert at 1 o'clock to 4. That's right, we are your home of the NFL and Super Week Los Angeles rolls through us. Download the free iHeartRadio app and search AM570 LA Sports to listen to us wherever you go. to see i like to see aaron donald you know win the super yeah. bowl i think i think from from a from a fan perspective i really like you know everything that he did in the in the in the championship game um but i guess you can never count on joe burrow no i mean the, the guy's a winner he's won he won at lsu he's you know he was out last year and he was winning until he he was out and you know he's he's got something special with him um he's got that jock peterson swag He's he definitely got the swag, that's for sure. He's he, he, he's smoking the cigars like Jock, and uh, he just he's he's rocking a chain. It's, it's Power up with the Power Plus mouth guard. Power Plus is the next step in human evolution. By simply placing your jaw into the Power Plus position, you'll be able to achieve maximum strength, speed, and endurance, even mitigate concussion. Power Plus mouth guard in a 13-year study is showing lower concussion rates to 0.26%. For maximum performance and protection, get Power Plus today or order now. It will include a free carry case. Power up with Power Plus. Let's go! Sports Madden and NFL sudden death for the first time ever. That's what I'm talking about, baby. That's what I'm talking about. You can listen to the action of the Madden Championship Series live with the grand prize of the largest prize pool in MCS history. One million dollars. Featuring 14 of the world's best players. And be the best. We've witnessed a year-long journey, a season of triumph, heartbreak, and redemption. Tuesday, the EA Sports Madden Bowl Championship 
Ultimate Series finale. Live from 4 to 6 p.m. We're trying to be champions this year, man. In the end, there will only be one. I'm the best in the world! The Madden Championship Series 22, live in HD on iHeartRadio. All shows are Pacific Standard Time. Give a special thanks to LeVar Arrington. Thank you. TJ Hushmanzada. Hey guys, thank you. Look, after that one segment, they like, we not clapping. For <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't they, love it. they love it. They love it. Uh, all right, we talked about the individual players. Before we get out of here, um, prediction down to the score. Ooh. Down to the score. They said it's a, it was a four point four. Plus four for the Rams, I believe. Is it plus four? I, I do think the Rams are going to win the game. And what did I say in, 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 in DraftKings? Did I say they cover? Or did I say I, it'd be by – I think they, they're going to win by more than four is what I said. That's what I'm cool. stick with. The Rams are going to win are by – Rams by four, right? Yeah. yeah so I think they're going to win by more than four. They'll win by more than four. Yeah. yeah so, for me, uh, <laughs> I guess I hedge my bets, man. I – I had the rounds before the season, um, winning the Super Bowl. And I said this the other day, but I'm going with my heart over my head. Um, I say the Bengals win 24-21. 24-21. Yeah. Oh, I didn't give a score, huh? Yeah, you didn't give a score, man. Come on, give me a score. 
I said they had the over on the points combined too, didn't I? Which was what? 40, 48. 48. Yeah, I, I, I think mm, 30, 30 to 24. 30 to 24. I'm going to go. I'm going to go with 30 to 24. 30 to 24. Yeah, 30 to 24. Rams. Rams. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm going Rams. I'm going Rams. I think the Rams. I think the Rams get out on them, and and, and build a nice lead, two touchdown lead going in in the second half. I think it ends up a closer ball game though. 34-28 is what I'm going. I think they get into, I'm gonna say a shootout, but they get into they get into a little back and forth in the second half. Um, I think there's gonna be some jitters a little bit with with Cincinnati to start it off with. It's gonna get them to start off slow. It's expected. Yeah, that's the yeah. four points but right I think there. They, I think they come back. I that's think the four. Back. Yeah, I think they come back and mm. win it, fellas. Hey, it's been real. It's man. been real. It's, been, it's real. been real. Thank you all, Hollywood Park Casino. Thank you so much. Don't forget, we're the home of the Rams and Super Bowl Fifty Six, and you can live stream on YouTube and fake Facebook. Thanks again so much. We always have a ball when we come out to Hollywood Park Casino. Thank you for coming out. We love you. AM 570 LA Sports. You're clear.